Welcome to the OSR's podcast. I am Mitt Mad Cow. What's going on, boys? Rakes as always. And hi, it's Rashko. So today, I feel very lucky to inform you all that we have the man, the myth, the legend, the ex J mod, and soon to be reinstated J mod, Mod Sween. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm good, mate. I'm good. Thanks for having me, guys. Dude, it's yeah, it's unreal to have you here. Honestly, when I when I messaged you on Twitter and you said that you were down to come on, I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be great. Like, oh, bro, we we we've got a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, but I think that before we get into the questions and the topics, I think Mint Mad Cow has a little sellout goal for us. Yes, yes, boys, <laughs> we want to bring this podcast to twenty twenty three. So if you are a big fan of this, you want to binge our content with awesome creators and J mods. If we get it four. 100 likes on this podcast, easy peasy humble. with Mr. Sween. And we want to have another podcast about the Winter Summit. So go ahead and leave your comments on what you want the new skill in RuneScape to be and why. And maybe we'll read them out during the podcast. Oh, yeah. That there we go. Man. We sold out, man. Time to start the questions. Rake, so you want to hit Sween up with the... The basic but awesome, <laughs> the, yeah, the original, I, the Rig C basics. I, I'll start it off with abs We'll go back to the basics 101 here. So, Sween, <laughs> how long have you been playing old school RuneScape, or when were you first introduced to the game? So, old school specifically, it was 2015, but I played RuneScape in 2004 up until 2012. And you can guess why I probably stopped playing around that kind of time. Um, content changes and whatnot. But in 2015, I finished up with uni and I saw that there was a job at Jagex going and I needed a job. I needed money. I had no money. And it was to work in the player support team. So as I was applying, I made an old school RuneScape account. Well, actually, you know what? Just remembered, I did make an account on the release day of old school RuneScape. I voted twice in the poll to bring old school RuneScape to life. Hell yeah. Uh, I just sat thieving master farmers in my mind i was like i'm gonna get a really high farming level and i'm gonna make loads of potions and i'm gonna make a ton of money <laughs> but i was i was i was so busy at uni that i just didn't play i recovered that account using like the knowledge i had to hand because i didn't i did not know what email address i used to make it or anything but once i was back at jagex i was able to find out what the account was called and stuff oh. and i had like three million like three mil worth of seeds and stuff like pretty high level seeds as well i think my thieving level was like not high, but eighty. Yeah, oh, I was like, damn, yeah. I could have, I could have, I could have stuck with this, and maybe I would, might have been good at the game. <laughs> <laughs> that school's more important. <laughs> yeah, to, to be fair, if you did stick with the game, you'd probably be like a permanent host on this podcast, mate, and your life would be going nowhere. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> probably for damn, the best. That, that actually <laughs> hit. That hit hard right there. Yeah, that's true. I'm gonna have to go to the bathroom. Sorry, Brent. <laughs> Where am I going? Oh man, that's that's super cool though. You know, I've always wondered, like, as I, I don't know if you're allowed to talk about this, especially now going back to being a J mod, but um, are you able to like look at old accounts and see like the items and stuff that they have? So like, could you look at a really old account from like the early 2000s that maybe has like Christmas crackers and party hats like on their RuneScape free accounts that have just been untouched for such a long time? Uh, technically, probably. I can't. I mean, e even if I was back at Jagex now, they've locked access to the kind of back-end account system to only like select uh, support moderators and stuff, you know, to stop any kind of misuse going on. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Preventative action. This is really good, really good change. Um, but in theory, I'm sure someone, somebody could run a like analytics request for old dormant accounts with these items, and then you could look at the back end. Like, yeah. And like whack, back when I started, you could, I mean, I was working player support, so I had access anyway. But I could, you know, type in a display name or a username and look at what was on the account, for example. Oh, wow. That's a lot of power. Did I want to say what you do with that power, but obviously nothing. I was just thinking what I would be doing with that power. Nothing um, nobody knows about. That's why I'm yeah. going back. It's all good. Uh, I'm finished You're business. all clean. Uh, Mal, He's no as, Jed. As a RuneScape player, are you more of a PVMer, a PKer, a skiller, maybe everything? Um, in my in my past, I was more of a... I wouldn't say PKer. So I was never really PKing in, in the worldie. But I was always involved in PvP, like CWA, 
uh, organized plan wars and stuff. That was kind of my, that oh, was all I did. Totally a PKer then. Oh yeah. PVP area. Did you run into race? Yeah. <laughs> but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go PKing. It, I, I just liked, I'm, I'm big into sports and stuff. So in my mind, I was like, this is like sports, but, on, but in RuneScape, like my clan is fighting another clan and there's a leaderboard and a ladder. And I was like, this is cool. So that was, that was kind of all I immersed myself into. Now I'm just nothing. I'm not good at the game. I just, I kill some bosses. I do some slayer tasks. I do some skilling. Occasionally my buddy was like, do you fancy a PK trip or let's go to revs for fun. And I go and I die because I'm not very skillful. Hurts. I'm a casual. <laughs> I would describe myself as a casual. Okay. That's, okay. That's good. I mean, it's good. It's good to have all perspectives on the board for sure but um so i was thinking how long has it been since you actually worked at jagex because it like it feels like years and i can't put my finger on how long it's been it's been at least two years right maybe three maybe four, four. Well, since i since i left since you left uh -huh. yeah how long uh, has it been no no just over just over one year mate um oh, it's been no one way. year no <laughs> <way>. pandemic <laughs> makes time fly what? bro trust time me. does fly no yeah way. so october 2021 yeah 2022 what was, now, right? what was yeah. the last thing you were kind of working on before uh before you left uh probably the group iron man release oh okay that was a year ago Ro yeah rolling into whatever came after yeah yeah then nice. yeah yeah, and then they did leagues and that. Uh, yeah, that was that's it. Year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was wow. obviously I was running. I was in community at the time, like running the community team, and we were already kind of having internal discussions, like, do we delay leagues, that kind of thing. Oh, that's I, a great topic. You, that's a great it? topic. We should, we should. You guys mind? Yeah, yeah. Let's like, go. so you, you know how you know how like, room, like, like the last time we had a room fest or something like that, you know, which was long ago, but they were like. Hey, finally, uh, Group Iron Man coming out soon. You know, winter twenty, you know, winter twenty seventeen, and then, you know, many many years later, they're like, okay, we're actually doing it now. Okay, guys, you ready? You're ready for this update, and then they bring it out, and then two months later, they're like, hey, guys, we have leaks now. Sorry, you guys have to play this now too. It's like, how did you feel about that? Like, I felt like they really messed up the marketing because. You know, like it was going good. The you know people and were that playing. was right when he left too. So maybe yeah, like like people were playing Group Iron Man. It was it was pretty popular, yeah. right? It was a long up, a long anticipated update coming out, and then they just kind of killed the uh, the momentum. Like two months later with leaks, right? Like people were like, "Oh my god, I can't keep up," you know. Like and then they have to like you know leave their their uh, Group Iron Man's. What was your take on that when you were planning it or writing the um... blog for it and stuff? Very conflicted. I'll be honest. Like I didn't want to delay content, especially like players love leagues. Um, and to, to think how I remember when we first pitched Twisted League, like the very first league, and the players' responses was like, "What is this? No, nobody has asked for this, and nobody had asked for it. We just kind of brought it out of right of the left field, and then people loved it." So I didn't want to have to delay something that people were really looking forward to, but. I think we got our planning messed up big time with um, not just release dates, but just general order of game content. So Group Iron Man, which is heavily reliant on either like active players having an alt account and playing Group Iron Man or people coming like lapsed players or new players coming back purely for it. And then we say, hey, all that progress you did, never mind, go and start a new account in a league mode and you have to do it all again. So I think not having league immediately after Group Iron Man was the right call but i wish we communicated it differently managed expectations way sooner yeah yeah because we we like as players right like you know because we talked about it a lot like through streams and stuff they were um we kind of came to the idea that like who you know was there some some upper management that was kind of like food forcing the release date or was it more like you know just jagged staffs that were kind of like ah you know we really need to just put these out or else we're gonna like forever just going to be delaying stuff, you know? Like, if one doesn't come out, the other doesn't come out fast. Is that... What was the dynamic, you know? Was it, like, higher-ups or just Jagus themselves with the planning? You it's know? very rare, if ever, that there's higher-up in, in, involved. Oh. Oh. In anything? There is, or... There's... Uh, no, I wouldn't say on anything. Updates. Like, with those Sweet. updates, for sure. Um, everything is generally the decision of the old school... Not the old, necessarily the old school team, but the old school group 
like we have the executive producer, uh, Mod Marcos, fantastic. And before that, we had Mod Rob H. So like exec producer kind of takes uh, insights from the, the old school team and then essentially acts as the middleman between the old school team and then higher ups. Generally, the higher ups trust the old school, the old school team. Hmm. The oh, league decision was really tough. It's funny because you see on Reddit, they're like, what will the overlords think of, right? We have these like shadowy figures in our mind that mm. control RuneScape. That's really just, good. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Like what does the I community think... might want to know? Like, do they have, like, obviously they have power, but do they ever use that power to do anything to the game at all? So obviously Jagex is owned by another company mm-hmm. and that other company is so huge and so vast. I think it's almost quite a funny idea that you've got this giant, like, I, I don't know how to, to, to phrase them, but I conglomerate. They like, yeah, sure, like conglomerate who own all sorts of stuff, probably billions and billions and billions worth of like m- m- catalog for them to be thinking about what's going into uh, like an online fantasy game. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe <laughs> I'm wrong. Maybe they're, maybe they're following it really keenly. Like the CEO mm-hmm. of um, the, the conglomerate is like, Damn, they're adding this update or what? Like, I can't do this. <laughs> but that's not really how that's um, going. Yeah, okay. so to, to that's follow, really insightful. To, to follow up from that, that yeah. is really insightful. I guess like my question to that is like sure, I, I think at one point, and it might even be the case now, there was like a Chinese mining company that owns Jagex at one point. And it's like I think which you're complete, one? I think you're, yeah, which one? I think you're totally right. <laughs> like they probably aren't too concerned with like the updates that come into the game. But I would question whether, like, the company that would buy Jagex would look at it as like, okay, we want to squeeze every penny out of this as we can. Or if when a company buys Jagex and it, it trades hands, like, do you know anything about, like, what the dialogue is there between the two companies? Is it like, okay, this, the game is on, like, a really good trajectory. It's going to do, lo- like, good over a long term. Like, what, what do you think the conversation is there, if there is one at all? Because I, I think that is, like, a bit of concern for me personally, is, like, a big company just saying, hey, let's just squeeze all the money we can out of it this. It is weird have. that it's traded. It, it is weird. The game we love is just switching hands every couple of years, you know? That's, and we don't that's even the world, bro. It. Like, yeah, yeah. That's, well, that's, if you that's look at the world. Blizzard or Microsoft, they have been buying other games, but it mainly stays there. For Jagex, I mean, I'm sure other games get traded like that, but, like, there there are some main ge- companies that don't get traded at all. But, yeah. Um, Rixies, a lot, of, a lot of studios who don't get traded will will also take investment from other sources. Like, mm. look at Tencent, like, putting tons of money into studios all around the world. And they're, they're going to yeah. want something back. Yeah. So to, to Rakesy's question of the dialogue, I've got no idea. Like, I, I'm not privy to any of those kind of conversations at all. And I'm really, really glad I'm not, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you can, you can safely assume that they want to make money. So that's why they buy the studio. But Old School's turning 10 in february next year which is, which is huge and nice. still it's like a it's still a subscription-based mmo there are bonds but they mm-hmm. kind of complement the subscription model and nothing has changed uh i think once we we try to poll partnerships uh content like should we add some temporarily exclusive but then everybody else gets it cosmetics related to like a twitch prime or prime gaming whatever you call them promotion and we polled it we said hey players yes or no like that's probably the closest we've come to monetization outside the subscription model and we let players say yes or no yeah mm. um, and players said no and there's no zero like regardless i think of who owns us i know right now there's no there are no plans whatsoever not even talked about of changing monetization in old school I hope and not. it kind of yeah. never has been that's good that, that, at least that, that makes that, me very really hopeful and and kind of spreading onto this topic like we're talking about the future and the trades where, where do you see the future of runescape uh, you just signed back up to be a JMO, which is awesome. So then marketing, you must see marketing a, though too, specifically, yeah, right? Which is also mm-hmm. like you must see the future of RuneScape and you must know how to market it. So where do you see this game going for the next five, ten years? I'm going to try and figure out how to market it. I don't know if I do. <laughs> now I've, I've been doing some marketing consultancy for them the last couple of months, which is how I ended up um, having the offer to go back. Where I see it in five to ten years. I don't know. Still around for sure. Uh, potentially huge. We are st- we are still one of the biggest MMOs in the world. Uh, so you've got World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy. 
you've got kind of Guild Wars and Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, and then I think you have like smaller MMOs, but still really huge followings like Albion and Eve. And, and we are probably in that top five, that are the big heavy hitters uh, in terms of the player numbers and subscribers and stuff. So it's still, I, I, you know, I get, uh, I can't say them, but every day, Everybody gets a company email, like here are the daily stats, the number of people who played today, the number of people that played this week, this month, subscribers. That's great. That's great. Old school's doing really well. It's, it's going to go a long way. But I think we need to just figure out how to keep the people playing it happy and then try and bring back people who stop playing it and then try somehow to, and this is what I'm going to try and work on, introduce new players back to the yeah. game. Oh man, I like, I like that idea. I want to I want to break into the how you're gonna get new players to play the game, but I'm also wondering your thoughts on um like so we're talking about RuneScape. What do you think about MMOs making a reemergence in the gaming industry, also in the next five to ten years? Do you keep a track or an eye on like MMOs shrinking? I play a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's funny because I think every every year for the last twenty years. People have been saying that MMOs are dead. Not just RuneScape is dead, but all dying. But MMOs, the MMO genre is dead and stuff. Yeah. And then yeah. look at like, you know, they didn't sustain the player numbers, but Lost Ark and New World pulled huge amounts of players. And all of a sudden, that's like, what, a million apiece for each game in a very short period of time. And you can point and say, hey, well, the, the genre is not dead because there's two million. Maybe they're the same player or some of the same groups. Mm-hmm. End Walker for Final Fantasy did huge bits. You know, people were kind of mo- leaving World of Warcraft to go to Final Fantasy. Uh, that blew up. People are going back to World of Warcraft for a uh, new expansion. That's blowing up. And I'm sure there's lots of the same kind of players bouncing between MMOs, but I don't think the genre has anything to worry about. I almost feel like it's getting a new wind. Like you yeah. say that when New World was popping, it was pop and mm-hmm. i was i was playing that there was people mm-hmm. everywhere and it seems like everyone's looking for that experience of an mmo they just don't know where to find it so maybe we will have a nice re-emergence of mmos and maybe runescape will be on the tailwind of the top five and maybe that's the future i don't know i'm trying to think where are we headed and it feels good it feels good to me yeah but yeah is it safe to say that we are headed to where we've always been headed right which is always just steady growth you know what I mean? Moderation, right? It's like, it's like, will we ever get an explosive growth? Maybe, probably not, but like, will we be able to sustain kind of like a, you know, a, a calm, like a calm win, right? Like, it's just a consistent growth. Because you're right, I, I think, I think MMOs in the back of people's heads are always like, yeah, it's one of those genres that, you know, had crazy moments, you know, right? Anytime a new one comes up, people want to see if they can relive that. Because, like, not you can't get that in like FPS games or MOBAs, you know? I feel yeah. like. I mean, so, it's, it's like. It definitely has a unique place. I, I would say that MMOs, my opinion, I think they're a niche <clears throat> nowadays, for sure, compared to a lot of games that are like almost instant dopamine hit. It's like you can load into Fortnite with your boys, and within 20 minutes, you've won, and you get that instant gratification. <laughs> I've never won one. I, 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 I won't. Won, won 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 but, but that's the thing that with, with old school RuneScape that makes it so unique is like it's almost a dying breed in the sense of it's long progression. It's like you don't get that satisfaction for a long time, and it's over a long period of time. And I mean, if you can somehow manage to like crack into like the new player base coming into old school runescape man i think that'd be i think that'd be huge for the game because like at the end of the day it's like you have such a solid foundation of like committed players to the game i've never known a community of people that are more committed than runescape players like you know they're they're just ride or die um something I would actually like to ask you, and, and this is something I've observed, and I, I've got so many questions for you, mate. But like I remember no, I a list. Yeah, <laughs> got a list and there's more coming. <laughs> but I remember um around about a it must have been just over a year ago, you were on Asmund Gold stream. Okay. And we we've spoken about that stream like a little bit. I think I might have talked about it on my uh my live stream myself. But um I remember one of the things that Asmund Gold said that was like a pot off for him from RuneScape, and even though he could see that it was a game that was good, it wasn't filled with MTX, 
uh, the people who worked on the game were passionate for the game, and the players who played it loved it. He couldn't get past the graphical fact. And not not to say that World of Warcraft is leaps ahead in terms of graphics, because to be honest, it's quite outdated in most places, but I, I personally think that that is kind of one of those like bumps in the road of introducing new people to RuneScape or old school RuneScape in 2022 to 2023 is getting people past the graphics. And I was just wondering if, if you'd given that any thought or is that something that you, you've thought about at all? Yeah, I've given it some thought and it's something I'll be thinking about. Um, so we've the important thing is obviously not to mislead people. We don't want to go with, you know, what, what do a lot of mobile games do? They show you an ad which looks nothing like the game you're going to play. Yeah. So we've tried to be as honest as possible. So we've kind of embraced, you know, the kind of uh, I don't know, I don't know how best to phrase it, but you know, like aesthetic. the Blender art style yeah, thing yeah. around. Like. Oh yeah, the aesthetic. So the Desert Treasure Two was. Oh, oh yeah, cool. yeah, I like yeah. that. That trailer is incredible. It is awesome, and it, you know, you can tell it's not going to be some like crazy AAA high fidelity graphics game. So more along those types of stuff. And but it's also consider, you know. Earlier, Rice Cup, you mentioned like explosive growth. Um, we've, we've had two moments of those that I can think of. One yeah. of them was probably the release of mobile. mobile right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. What makes yeah. mobile great? Because it's a tiny download. The data is tiny, probably in part because of how old school looks. You know, yeah. I, might, I might be completely wrong. I'm not really technically minded. But I imagine if it's like a more high fidelity game, tons more textures and assets to download, it wouldn't be quite as accessible. Not to say I don't want the game to look better or to change the way it looks. I like the way it looks. But yeah. I, that said, I do play mostly using the 117 HD plugin because it makes me feel really nostalgic seeing that kind of uh, game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I'm kind of rambling a lot. But to answer your question, yeah, the kind of graphical style is, is something I've thought about and continue to think about. Yeah. But for the style as it is, we just have to... Betray it as honestly as possible in the right way as possible. It, do you know that it kind and of also look at the art team? Mm -hmm. I, I was just going to say what you said about making it, you know, not lying about what the game actually is for the ad. It just instantly makes me think of like Burger King getting um, sued because apparently they made their burgers look so amazing in advertisements, <laughs> and then they had, really? they had yeah, they it's actually they had the to like one. pull back <laughs> on how good it looked because it was just like fake. And they, they, I think they got sued like back in like the nineties for it. They need to sue every fast food company because, then because all that was like trash. I, I mean, I, this is so like tangent, and I'll end it real quick. But yeah, they they did stuff yeah. like where they use glue mm. to make it. So, like, do you know when they pull it apart and you see the cheese and it's like the mozzarella cheese mm -hmm. for like pe pizza and stuff like that? A lot of the time, that's glue. That's why it looks yeah, like that yeah. too. Like they do all that, but. Back to back to the graphical thing. I will say, by the way, I love RuneScape graphics. I personally will not I will not play anything other than like the original. I don't even do the uh the smoothing stuff. You can get like GPU stuff where it makes it like smoother. I like the original, but I'm just kind of aware of the fact that when there's so many new games that are coming out and the graphics are like kind of like a big part of it, I, I feel like it is something that could be considered um, and, and I think an answer to that is having like a super easy way for players to be able to opt into good graphics. And I don't think it should be the standard. I think the standard should be basic, but there should be like a really simple way of being like, hey, you can actually play the game in HD. And all you got to do is like click this button. It's already there in the RuneScape client. It's not a RuneLite thing or whatever, or, or make it as simple as possible for like the average player that's going to be coming in. Because I mean, new players are going to be just that the average player mm -hmm. yeah I, I agree like if we were to introduce another way to play the game or see the game i'd want it to be optional toggleable but then you kind of think about let's say that happens but 99 percent of players maybe even more 99.5 percent of players are using the new kind of hd way of seeing things oh, that'd be scary do you then look at it do you, do, you, do, you then, do you then look at it and wonder like all right we need to there's no point maintaining two versions let's just go with one version because mm. they're not the final 0 0.5 will just come over anyway okay yeah maybe i don't know that, this is, this oh, is it's always something oh, actually, for sure it's in, a good thing in that to case up. in that case i mean it, it'd be interesting to just ask like maybe the rune light devs like hey what percent of people run hd for example that i think mm -hmm. that'd be a, some insightful information 
But like to go off of what you know, um, Rixie said about Aspen Gold's take on it. Like you have to remember, you know, this guy, he, you know, old dogs don't learn new tricks, right? Or easily accept new things, right? This guy's been playing World of Warcraft since he was probably like ten or something. Yeah. So he's probably very attached to the idea of a more textury game. So like, how can yeah, you know I mean, how could he ever enjoy a game that's not textury, right? Like he literally grew up with it. So yeah. in a way, it's like. All right. I mean, his his opinions is valid if it's strictly to with people that are similar to him. You know, people that grew up playing that. But like, for example, I grew up playing Pokemon, and the graphics never really, you know, what I mean, it never stood out to me like, oh my god, this is so realistic or whatever. You know, like and things like Minecraft is is like some of the most popular games, and you can't be like, yo, this is revolutionary graphics. Right? It's more like <laughs> the aesthetics. It's so appealing, you know, yeah. right? That like it doesn't matter. You just play it. Yeah. So I feel like we don't. It's more important to have a unique art style, yeah. I think, exactly. rather than yeah. just going yeah. high, fide- high fidelity. Exactly. Also, with, with with players like Asmund Gold, I think he's I think he's awesome. I love watching his yeah. content. It probably isn't just the graphics. He's also, like you said, he's been playing World of Warcraft for years and years. He's used yeah. to the kind of tab target action bar type yeah. MMO rather than old. You know, old school was kind of like like classic <laughs> point and click. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like your old tomorrow online nice, type play. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, to, to, I you're right. There's a lot of MMOs nowadays aren't nice. Mean, man. WASD to a RuneScape player is nothing. It's like that's something you type in the chat. But like every other <laughs> game online, it's like you go there. WASD is like the way you move. So you're right. It's a it's a big thing. But just just to wrap back around to the Asmund Gold stream because I remember it very vividly. And I remember it's his favorite guy, bro. Dude, I, I like. <laughs> I Asmund. mean, he's funny. He's I like, funny. Yeah. I do he's like Asmund. But what I'll say is, like, something that I had a conversation about. I don't know if I talked about it on here or if it was on my stream, but I was like, that stream for you, Sween. Like, what? I, I'm just gonna say my piece, but like, I always looked at it and I was like, man, I did not envy you being in that position on that on that podcast they did, purely because. <sighs> You were in a position where you had like a hundred thousand plus people looking at you. Asmund oh Gold's there God. talking to you. He doesn't know very much about the game. And at the time, <sighs> the whole chat are spamming Doolarena, Lorena, do Lorena. Like that's literally the chat <laughs> for like you know, the whole time. So so Sween's in a yeah, position yeah. where he's like, Okay, I need to be honest with Asmund here because you know, it, it's like I've got a choice here. It's like either I can make it out to not be a problem to Asmund and disappoint the community. Or I just very openly say we've got a bit of an issue in game currently. And like, dude, how was that experience like at that moment in that time? Were, were you like shit in it? Or because I think you handled it <laughs> really it? well. <laughs> I think you handled it amazingly. Like, I remember, explain. I remember watching explain it what thinking, shitting man, it is. I do not envy Sween right now. I was like, that is a hard that's a hot seat to be in. You know? Yo, yo, Rixie, can you can you translate what shit in it means for us <laughs> non UK people? Shit in it, like he's, uh, you know, he's. I don't really know how, how to describe it? that. Like, no, you're winging it, sh- improvising shit, it. Shit in it is like being sat there, and it's like you know something awful is about to happen, and like you have to get deal roasted with it in okay. the moment. Take the roast, yeah, like okay. rank two smithing, yeah. right? Okay. He's shit in it. I don't think they're. How would you describe shit in it, Sweet? I don't know how to put it into America. <laughs> being very. Perhaps nervous about something? Nervous, or... like on the spot about something that's a bit controversial. I, 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 I think, you know what, I think the perfect word for it is trepidation. I've never I'm even feeling heard... that sense of trepidation Never heard of it. that word before. You're going to have to explain that, that one. That's all, that's <laughs> Don't have Rakey word. spell it, bro. It's... <laughs> <Break it home. laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> uh, for, the, for the stream itself, uh, I, mean, I was lucky enough to be on it with Kieran and being with Mike D. Uh, obviously, Kieran's still Jagex. He's now uh, Associate like Design Director, which God's is here. awesome. Yeah, God's yeah, here. Exactly. <laughs> and Mike D was fantastic to work with. He only left because he went back to the US and at the time he weren't really set up for like remote working, but he was awesome product director. He just believed in letting the old school do the old school team, do what the old school team want to do. Uh, we didn't prepare for it beforehand. We wanted to go into it really organically. So we didn't have any list of questions, but we guessed some topics could come up and you know, behind the scenes, we were planning to make changes to things like the dual arena and address, you know, upcoming account security and bots and whatnot anyway. Okay. So we just kind of said, hey, if this comes up, let's just be honest about what we're doing. Yeah. And that, that was what it was, pretty much. I think also it wasn't it wasn't last year, like it was <clears throat> for the release of Leagues 2. So probably like 26 months ago, quite a while back. Okay. Yeah. 
I, I just I just mm. remember it and I, I thought that you handled the situation literally the best. And I, I just thought like if I was in your position on that stream, I'd have been like, Oh my god, what do you say to that? What do you say to that? I didn't have a chat open, by the way. Yeah. Oh, did not you have not? Why, why, oh, why, would I, why would I have the chat That's open? such a good no idea. Way. I don't know what you would. <laughs> All right. Oh, no, god. that would really mess you up. You would yeah. totally like just freeze. See, for, okay. well, if I, when I was on Q&As, and I, I'll probably go back on them and do other streams as well, I would have the chat open. But for something that's kind of like monumental and potentially as impactful as the stream we were doing, I mean, we, we paid for it as well, right? Like this was a paid act activation too. We kind of wanted to make sure we were totally focused on the, the chat at hand, say chat, the conversation at hand, not the Twitch chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. forget Twitch chat. That's, I <laughs> mean, right. something you said there, I, I think at the time, I, I don't believe there was a word that had been put out by you guys at Jagex regarding the Doodle Arena. So I think that's why it stands out in my head that much more. Because I, I don't think there had been like a, a blog post about how you were going to address it or anything. So it kind of seems like, well, you know, in hindsight, it was like, damn, like, what's he going to say to that? Whereas obviously we know what happened now. So, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, what's yeah. The, what was kind of like the behind the scenes of the duel arena, right? Because like I, we, we, we caught word that, you know, there was the European court stuff going on with like, uh, gambling in Europe, right? Because like even Twitch chat, like Netherlands, they took away predictions on streams because like that counts as gambling, right? So like, did they like just really hit the online sphere hard, like in Europe or something? And and was RuneScape just like you know caught up with it, or is it more like specific? They've been looking at that and like like either Jagex or like the you know the, the governments took action. I guess what what was like kind of like the behind the scenes. I know you guys can't like. I know you guys couldn't really I, yeah, say no, no. much about it. I, right? I don't think it was anything to do with any legislation or government action. Um, oh, okay. Uh, we, Jagex works really closely with, with the government anyway on like a number of different topics. Um, Maud Kelvin, who's, I can't remember his title now, but he, he goes to parliament, like, I want to say occasionally, right? And talks to MPs and, and whatnot about stuff. We're a part of, I don't know if we still are, but there's like, there are gaming organizations in the UK called Yuki and, and Tiger. And it's just like different studios um, meet and talk about things. So we, we, we're part of that. And then we talk to legislators. I don't Damn. think, and I might be wrong, it was anything to do with that. I think it was just the case of... Coincidence. <laughs> well, no, no. Yeah. Look, mm -hmm. I think community didn't want it. And yeah. so we looked at we, but we wanted to make sure we were doing our due diligence and be like, okay, is is it is it really really super rife with misuse and no legitimate activity? So we kind of looked into it. Um, we introduced the tax and started tweaking different changes. So before the removal, we made like a number of changes anyway yeah. to see if we could bring up like normal. Like we're loath to remove any content because there are people who do like the content for what it is. So we you know. Did our did our research and then we're like, all right, and then they pulled it. I think I might have left by that point. Yeah, I don't. But to answer your question, I don't think, and I might be wrong. I don't think there was any kind of like undue pressure on us to to make the change from outside. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I want to bring the combo back to you going back into uh, being a J mod, and you said right. that one of your responsibilities is oncoming or on ramping new people to RuneScape. And we talked about maybe graphics, but what are some other things that you are thinking of right now to onboard new people to RuneScape? So onboarding isn't really, maybe I misspoke, but like the onboarding is with the, with the game team and product team. They design that new flow. Oh, Mark okay, Marketing is bringing those new players into their flow. That's what I so was, sorry, one, I must have missaid that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah. about then. So, so one thing like other games, let's say World of Warcraft, they just released a new expansion. They can say, hey, there's, they can market this brand new expansion, which is the end, you know, the end of the game. This is what they're playing right now. Also, here's a boost to the end of the game. You can go and play it right now. We can't. So let's say we released a really, really high tier raid. And we can't, just, we, we can't market out of new players because they're not going to play it for like two years. They'll play the game yeah. and spend two years getting ready for it. Yeah. So one thing I, I really want to kind of experiment with is just having entirely different, distinct marketing aimed at new players. And we've done a bit of experimentation with that over the last few months where I've been doing some consultancy. So instead of, you know, hammering ex 
that game like upcoming game content launches at new players. Instead, we just put old school RuneScape in front of them. So we're not saying, hey, uh, Secrets of the North's coming out. This is a brand new quest and you're going to spend ages getting ready for it. Come and play right now. It's the best time to play the game. Instead, we just say, hey, this is old school RuneScape. It's a super nostalgic, classic MMO. You're probably going to like it. So yeah. It's I'm funny you're doing what, it and it's yeah, yeah, you're doing what content creators have to do. Like I'm starting to learn how to title my videos. It's like, okay, maybe I'm not at Rev Cave. Maybe I found a secret location that I can anti DK in, right? It's like, how do you title this to get more people interested in the content? It's funny that you guys are also having that revelation right now as well. Yeah, so it is um making sure we're playing up to algorithms and uh, hitting the right audiences, but also the subject of what we're mess- what we're messaging. So I'll do Secrets of the North again. We're not going to put that quest in front of brand new people because they won't be able to play it. Instead, we're just going to put some kind of like generic, this is old school RuneScape asset in front of them instead of a Secrets of the North themed asset. We're not going to say, come and play this brand new quest. We're going to say, come and play old school RuneScape. Yeah. And so Gosh, far, I think yeah. it's going all right. Mm, yeah. I like that. Uh, when we had Mod Goblin on, he actually brought the idea of mid-tier content and playing with your friends. And then later we found out Forestry's coming in. So now we can woodcut with the homies. Now, maybe that would also like just being able to do everything in the game that's mid-tier, low-tier with friends. Maybe that would also be a great way to bring people back, like new players into RuneScape again. I think so. Yeah. So mm-hmm. in addition to me jo- rejoining... We're also higher. We've also uh, just hired, and they start in January. I don't know if they'll be very player facing, so you might not ever hear of them or meet them. But they're going to look after. Um, it's called CRM, but it's, it's essentially a lot of our kind of smart messaging, emails, and um, in-game notifications, that kind of thing too. So I think what we're able to do that, coupled with new technologies we've onboarded, is start carving out different groups and segments of players like. Maybe people, as you said, who have lapsed, but have a woodcutting level good enough to go and do forestry, and they've got, I don't know, an active friends list. Maybe we can kind of get that segment and then hit them up and be like, hey, come and play forestry with your buddies. Oh, that is a great topic. Um, You know, like, I think a lot of other MMOs, what they have, like, we have, like, a very primitive, like, version of, like, the, you know, like, a party finder, right? Like, we don't really have a party finder, but I know a lot of MMOs do have that and and i feel like that i mean we're talking about like trying to get new people or or lesser experienced veterans or whatever to like be a part of like more content in the game i feel like you know group content is huge but it's really difficult for people to actually do them right so maybe establishing like a a actual party finder would be a great way to like it's somewhere easy to see because right now i feel like it's so deep in the interfaces that it's impossible to find people always ask where is it I feel like we probably need something more mainstream. More but that's not necessarily attracting new players, though. But, you know, you were on the, on that topic, so. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, there's a plugin, too, as well, right? Which is kind of like a, not a friend finder, but like a it's player super... doing something that I'm doing finder. So it might, maybe, maybe we can chat and say, hey, yeah. how many people use this? What functions do they use? And then use, uh, use that as a guide to like, okay, maybe we should look to implement some stuff. Yeah, I know it works in other MMOs pretty well because I used it. <laughs> so it's just like, but it's more obvious where they are, you know? Like, it's just like, we don't really have the, I guess, the, what do you call it? The real estate to put it somewhere easily, perhaps. Maybe on, on the, near the, the sidebar, or like with the HP and stuff, perhaps. I don't know, near the mini map or something would be a good one. But then there are so games like, looks there. Yeah. so Final Fantasy XIV mm-hmm. has a group finder, but. Dungeons and raids are so tied to the storyline, you kind of need a group finder. Whereas old school yeah. RuneScape doesn't really have a, like a. If you don't, you know, if you don't have friends mm-hmm. to play with, you're probably going to be able to do most things as you would. Now that's a completely separate topic about should an yeah. MMO be so soloable? Blah blah blah. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not touching yeah. that. Yeah, no, not no, right no. now, at least. <laughs> no yeah. way. But I think other MMOs probably have a more pressing need for a, a party finder. Whereas for for us, it probably would just be like a nice to have social boost rather than a we need this to let players progress and not quit yeah it's not to do yeah it's not to do with getting new players in because you know they're not going to do any of that stuff anyways for a while that's Mm. for sure yeah speaking of new mmos is there any other inspiration that you found from them that might uh, affect runescape 
Like you said, um, you were bringing up the party finder. Anything else? Like any inspirations from other MMOs? No, tough. It's a tough one because other MMOs have such a different model of gameplay and also things like monetization and uh, retention metrics uh, or like tools and stuff, right? So what do other MMOs do? You log in for a day and they give you something and you log in for two days and they give you something. You log in for right. seven days in a row and they give you something really cool. That does not fit old school. No. For, so, oh, hell no. I uh, hate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm not, I'm not using that as like, a, we're going to introduce this because yeah. we're not. It's more yeah. of a, it's really tough to take inspiration from other games. Indirectly, sure, with maybe like some boss mechanics and whatnot. Uh, I think... I'm trying to remember who designed a lot of Theatre of Blood. I know Mod Archie had a big hand in it towards the beginning. And, Definitely uh, carry and, uh, it, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. I, um, I think Archie at least pitched a type of encounter that was really like influenced heavily by one of Destiny's raids, for example, because we played a lot of Destiny together. So we do take inspiration from other games because we play a lot of other games, but it's not so much looking at and saying, okay, they do this, let's do exactly the same thing. Because most of what other games do, most of what other modern MMOs do, we just we just couldn't because players would hate it and then there's no point doing it. So that's where RS3 comes in and goes, okay, we'll take that. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, how, I mean, yeah. how open is the old school team to taking, say, like heavy inspiration from another game? So, like, oh, say, for example, um, you could pretty much just take the foundations, com the complete foundations and the functions of how another game works, and then implement it into RuneScape, into old school RuneScape, and, like, the old school RuneScape theme. Is that something that the JMods are, like, open to doing? Or is it, like, a little bit taboo? Or, like, how, how, do, the, how do the guys look at that? Uh, I don't know if it's, like, taboo, but... It's probably on a case by case basis, you know, if something looks good or or resonates. I don't know. I don't think there's really like a yes or no answer to it. It's more of a if there's an idea, then they might look to apply some things from it, sure. I don't think they'd actively avoid it. I think one of the so with uh, game jams and stuff like that, I think a pitch I was working on, I say working on, like I put together like three really bad slides in a deck because I was a bit too busy to finish it probably, but Hades, but old school. So instead okay. of getting boosts from cool. from like Aphrodite and 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 uh, Zeus, you were getting boosts from Zamorak or Saradome and that type of thing too. Like that kind of dungeon crawler. But and no one was like, "This is this is terrible. We can't copy from another game." It was more of a, "Oh yeah, that would be fun." Okay, that gives me hope because uh, you ever heard of a game called Escape from Tarkov? Yes, I, I know you <laughs> have. Oh, no, yeah. he's bringing you. Uh, I, I've, you heard of Pokemon? I've been saying that <laughs> for so long. Like, so I used to, I used to be a PvPer. That's all I did in RuneScape for like over twelve years or whatever it was. Um, it's all I cared about. So nowadays, I don't do a lot of PvP just because I've done it for so long. It's a little bit stale to me personally because it's the same thing. Um, so I usually go outside of RuneScape for my PvP experiences, whether that's like League of Legends or Escape from Tarkov. And Escape from Tarkov, to me, is just perfection for a PvP game. And I can also completely see it in a lot of ways, being like the entire like core concept of it being taken and like applied to RuneScape, but in like a mini game form and like Man, you don't understand. I think about it like daily. Like it, it's like fly him over, bro. I want I it. that brain. Look at that thing. <laughs> I want it. I want it so bad, honestly. And so that gives me hope that you know that wouldn't ever get completely shut down. Um, oh, that's cool. I, I play a lot of. Um, so I played a lot of No Call of Duty, and I, I play with like Aiza and Archie quite often. So we we like group up and play a lot of COD together. And there's a game mode on there. I think DMZ, yeah, which is kind of like Call of Duty's take on Tarkov. Yeah, much more casual friendly, which I like because Tarkov is very hard to get into, yeah, <laughs> but very fun. For real, it is. I I think that's something that RuneScape's taught me over the years, which is games which are difficult to pick up and understand are often the ones that are worth learning because they actually have a lot of like substance to them. Um, but to go back real quick to advertising for old school RuneScape. So when I think of advertising for old school RuneScape. 
probably one of like the most successful campaigns I've seen you guys do, or at least I'm assuming it was successful, was a lot of the time the campaign, the marketing, like I'm, I'm talking like a video advertisement. I see them on Facebook and stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. it's very heavy on playing on nostalgia. So so that kind of advertising obviously is for the returning player, for old players of the game, and it's like it's the music. It might be the goblins in Lumbridge, like little things like that that really like you know, kind of click home for people. So my question to you is <clears throat> trying to come at that from a different angle of hitting players that have no nostalgic tie to the game. Do you have like an example in mind what what you think could possibly be something that could be advertised to completely brand new players that might be appealing to them? Like I know it's a big question. I don't know if you do. So if you because it's the kind of thing I think about as well. And I, I kind of struggle to think of like the perfect like thing to show somebody that doesn't know the game. Um so we've put out, we've we've experimented the last couple of months with a couple of different assets and like full videos on our YouTube channel, but I'm also cut up and made bespoke shorter assets from those longer form videos. So there is a, like a, what I think, I think it's called what is old school runescape. And it's kind of like an animated blender wise old man in the pub being like old school runescape this, and you can kill bosses and you can do this and do quests and train herb law and get a pet or other stuff as well. It's like four minutes video, maybe three minutes long. That's done really well, like the huge performance. So yeah. it's again, it's like being honest with what the game is, trying to make it using iconic characters because the way algorithms work, even though something's aimed at a new player, you still want to get your actives and your laps to kind of engage with it too, give it a boost, comment and be like, oh, I recognize the wise old man. I get that reference. And then, you know, hopefully performance does well. And in, in terms of how you do a lot of the marketing, Unfortunately, and I hate this about social media, but you, you do target people. You have like your kind of cohorts and you you probably see the stuff, right? See on Facebook and whatnot, because we've targeted you because you hit the criteria we're aiming at. You are yeah. a male in his age group and you play games <laughs> and you might have even played RuneScape. And then we'll try and use that to find new players as well. I hate it. I hate it, but we do because yeah. you have to. Where, where do you where do you find the most success? Like, which social media platform has the most success for advertisement? That varies. Um, I don't know if you kind of follow a lot of like tech stuff generally. So bit. with um, like Apple have kind of really killed Facebook and Meta with their opt out or is it opt in data tracking. So Facebook of like, they made a huge business and I, I'm, I'm not doing this justice at all, but there are so many good videos online you should watch and not listen to me describe it really, really badly. But Facebook <laughs> made a lot of success by capturing tons of data about what people are doing, what, what Facebook users are doing generally, and then selling that data to companies yep. to use. I heard about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but now you can't do that because of like Apple, like most people were using Facebook on their phone, for example, then Apple said, Hey, no, you can't. We're going to give people the, the, the option to not let you do that. And then, surprise, surprise, people didn't let them do that, give them the choice. Yeah. And then they, Facebook don't have good data to sell. So Facebook was great, not so good anymore, but still is pretty useful. Um, it is just then there's like a mix. Uh, when, you, when you have like Google ads, for example, that's just websites generally. You, you buy advertising space. And that goes on relevant websites that we deem content relevant, for example. Hmm. Do you know, it's, it's interesting. The digital yeah. marketing side of stuff is probably my weakest. And that's also part of me being high. Like I've awesome. got my, I've got my 12 month plan, which is okay. You're good at most things, but your digital marketing, cause you're not a traditional digital marketer isn't up to speed. So me and my boss, we're going to make me good at digital marketing and I can play with data and uh, manipulate users and whatnot. That's what digital marketers do, I think. If, oh, if I had nah. to recommend something to look into, it, I was talking to Rice to you uh, before the podcast. TikTok, for some reason, seems to be getting really deep in a RuneScape. Like you will see so many videos on TikTok now that are just showing like the basics, and they're going semi-viral, like nothing even impressive. Just like here, me and Lumbridge giving one mil to noobs, and I, it just goes viral. Yeah, we we did it for Fresh Start Worlds. We paid a couple of TikTok creators um, with like. 
Start Ooh, start well behind the, the scenes. Project messaging. I'm gonna have to yeah. get deeper into TikTok, my <laughs> man, because that that does seem good for RuneScape, which is just so weird to me. But it is. It it performed okay. It performed all right. It wasn't like mind blowing. Like okay, cool, no. we're a TikTok game now, <clears> and it wasn't terrible. So it's the kind of thing we're probably keeping our mind going forwards. When you, when oh. you do that, it's like do you do like an advertisement and then you click and it throws up the phone ad so you can download the mobile app or no, I don't. I, I don't use TikTok. I, I barely use, and this is terrible because I work in community marketing, but I barely use social media because I don't like most of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel uh, you. To the point like I deleted my personal, back when I was still Jagex Queen, I deleted my personal Twitter because I was just, I followed a lot of like takes and politics and oh, whatnot, yeah. current affairs. Oh, yeah, stressed. I, I was just, yeah, dude, I was just getting angry. I was I just waking up for and a year. and getting so angry and the scrolling and barely getting year. angry. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Nah, screw that. So now my Twitter feed is just uh, RuneScape games and cute cats, and oh, it makes yeah, me happy. happy. Stuff. I'm, I'm so much happier now. It's crazy. But yeah. with the to answer your question, I think with TikTok, I don't believe it kind of throws up a banner ad. Not into not like Instagram does, for example. I think it is very much a. I, I tried it. There's it does pull up apps off the App Store. Okay. So... Yeah, we must do then. Yeah, I'm I'm probably wrong. I just I just approved the budget to go to people to make TikTok videos about risk. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're yeah. in between her. I get you. I get you. Okay. I, oh, yeah. I want to talk about some. Oh wait, Rick, so you can go. I yes. was just I'll, I was I'll, just going to say well. like to so to touch back onto the group of people that you would be marketing the game to. Is it like? Is there like an age specific thing for old school RuneScape? And the reason I say that is because. When I look at my analytics, like, I mean, I, I don't know if this is because there generally are no people under the age of 18 viewing my content, or if it's because everybody just makes an adult account nowadays. But, like, according to my statistics, I have, like, 0.1% people under the age of 18. So, my question to you is, trying to get new people to play RuneScape, obviously, you know, the biggest viral market, more or less, is if you can get younger people in on it especially children but but do you see runescape old school runescape being a game that would be advertised more towards the younger generations or more towards our generations not a young generation first of all it's like rated peggy 16 because there's beer or something in the game <laughs> is oh, it really or whatever true, true. true. pg really? yeah let's no dude way. there's so many bars but... in runescape mate yeah. <laughs> every city <laughs> yeah and then we 16. you know what we released the christmas event i don't know if you guys have done it yet um and it's about getting drunk and having drinks. And we were like, we do a lot of that, don't we? Maybe we should do some uh, less, that's less UK thing. pub stuff. It is, it is very much a UK thing too. Uh, but we don't want kids. We don't want under 13s because firstly, I don't think they can play the game. Terms and conditions. We, with, um, with legislation, with GDPR and with copper, which, uh, which it kind of prevents you capturing and recording data on people under 13, maybe under 16 or something like that. So... Well, yeah. Wasn't it back in a day? Jump. Wasn't it back in a day like you could play pre thirteen? You just need your parents' consent or something, right? Something like that. Yeah, that, that, that was that's a, thing. Not a thing, right? That's not now. It's right? not. It's I not think. a thing anymore. I don't know <laughs> if that was. I don't know if that was even compliant. That might have just been a yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone did. But then, how do you prove it? Like, yeah, bring exactly. your, bring, you your bring your child to Jagex and be like, "This is my son, and he really wants to play." Please, <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. So. Also look at the type of game too. Uh, so I, I worked in the time I've been away. I've worked at other studios. I've been privy to a lot of kind of research around like tons of different types of players and types of games. Younger players like free to play games and free to play games tend to come with uh, really different types of monetization techniques, different types of monetization methods, like selling the skins and selling boosts and whatnot. And old school RuneScape isn't right for that. And we don't want it to do to do that. Um, we're subscription based and that doesn't really resonate with that kind of subscription model doesn't really resonate with younger people yeah. they want they want like no barrier to entry they want to say this is a free game hit download and then go and beg or steal mom and dad's credit card to buy <laughs> a goku skin or something uh, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a fortnite that's thing. what we need we need oh, a broomscape yeah. box i'm just kidding please no <laughs> please no yeah that is really interesting. I, I mean, I, I'm just thinking like, I'm, I don't know, man. I, I was talking about this the other day with some friends of mine and I was saying how, I don't know if it's just me, 
but like I'm really difficult when it comes to like I, I could probably name like on one hand the amount of ads that I've seen where I've been like, oh, I need to check that out. Do you know what I mean? And that might just be a me thing. It might be an age thing. I, I'm not sure. It might be because I don't like to like, I like to be a bit more like frugal or more specific with how I spend my time and my money nowadays. But like, you know, it, it's interesting because we're all relatively the same age here. Like we're all like 25 to 30 years old or nearly 30. Um, and, and I feel like RuneScape is that perfect game for people that kind of are in their like 20s to like 35 like uh, along there and i think that as a whole like that category of like that age of people can be a little bit difficult sometimes to try and like like home in on like to get it to those people like i've heard that even for like brand deals that i've had with like sponsors one of my biggest selling points as i'm told is like the people who watch my content the age of men who are between the age i think it is like 21 to 35 and how that's a really difficult demographic of men to get to buy shit and it's like so that's a big selling <laughs> uh -huh. point for sponsors that that's the target audience and it's probably the same for these guys as well so just just an interesting thought but i didn't know that runescape was a 16 i had no idea yeah yeah pretty much all the sponsors we've had is is not for kids. You I mean, know? it's like, like even though rules with like, you know, I had a like hair growth one before, which <laughs> yeah. was like, I don't know if I should take this, dude. Even, <laughs> like, like, yeah. like e yeah, even like the mobile games that that we get sponsored, <laughs> they're they're probably more for like teenagers, you know. Yeah. Like Rachel Legends, not very like a kiddish game, definitely you know? not. No. So yeah, so it makes a lot of sense. Oh, but I I want to kind of branch. Uh, no, not branch, but like talk within the whole marketing aspect so now you're you know you're getting into it and you're right you're probably taking as much ideas as uh, you know under the sun that you probably can but like i think one of the biggest appeals like because you know like rixie has said earlier about how you have to kind of be be like a content creator in a way because you have to like like think about attracting people to the game right except we we only do it for really the fuse per se but like you have to like really bring the people into the game right and but for us i think one of the biggest successes of getting people to watch content is like creating like a sort of narrative where you're you're you know you have like a big goal that you have to reach for rixie it's really straightforward his goal in runescape is to make a certain amount of money right and that is very appealing i think that like even if you don't play runescape the idea of making a lot of money and buying things that you want in a game is like a really appealing thing so like i could totally be like a like a, a video right like like mm -hmm. you kind of showcase like a a goal of runescape right and then you kind of like you know like you know take rake c's idea like how how you can progress to make the money right you can skill you can uh make runes you can kill bosses for money and then you can oh, that's buy such all a good gear, idea for marketing right? though for right? real and then you're like you then you can buy yourself the drain chain pot you know what i mean like that idea right and then and then you know like i think even the young teens could totally get into that idea of like wow that's a crazy goal in this game that sounds super fun and then like the idea of questing right i think questing is like a big one's like get the quest cape do all these different quests you have all these, you know, grandmasters, and ultimately you'll kill Galvig or whatever, like things like that. And you know, you have, you can also do like Iron Man stuff too. I think I think that's like something you could do is like focus a video based on a goal, like an arc, like a popular goal in this game, right? Like obviously Maxon's a bit out too out there, but like you know, making money to get certain things, doing you know, getting a quest cape, but like you know, learning to do your do to do your first boss thing, something like that is really. I think It'd it's appealing. Perfect. Are those videos um, like when Frame does it, like how do you get a yeah. bond in 24 hours? And if you make that into an advertisement and then people be like, oh, that's all I got to do. Like, I could do that. I could grind yeah, that. It like gives that. me a goal. And next thing you know, they have a bond and they're playing membership and they're learning and they're in the yeah. game. That's a really odd. I think, I like yeah, I think one of the biggest strengths in this game in terms of like, because like you don't want to just get like anybody play the game, right? You want to get people playing the game knowing that like this is how you'll probably have fun in this game because like you have to actually figure out how to have fun in this game sometimes when you're older right yeah. so like you you just show them the appeal of <laughs> these goals and then like you get them into it knowing that like okay this is probably what i want to do right it's like that's my objective and then they get into it and they get you know they get into it and now they're comfortable with the game because like it's a very complicated game so you want them to really like have a clear vision right away and if you can do that i think they'll stick I think that's the hardest part, uh, like I've noticed as a, you know, from a creator reading people's responses is that oftentimes 
people get into this game, they know nothing. Like, they almost feel like they're so lost, and they always have to ask you, hey, what should I do? Like, 99% of the time, it always comes down to, to the fact that they're just lost, and they don't know what to do in the game. But then, like, you have to give them that, like, you know, that kind of direction. Not necessarily exactly telling them what to do, but kind of like give them a direction that they can navigate the game, right? Through all this craziness. And then once mm. they're settled down, you know, then, then they can actually stay in the game too. Like, and then they, they feel confident to branch out into new goals and, you know, just be confident that they know a lot about the game now and they can do whatever they want. I think that's yeah, like sure. a big, that's, big um, part. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah, really good observation on everything. Yeah. But yeah. that's like... That kind of comes into play when we've bought the player from yeah. whatever platform we found them, and then we need to follow up with something. So, like going to a brand new player with the asset of, hey, come and earn a bond in 24 hours. Their reaction is, what the fuck's a bond? Or, <laughs> yeah, or it's, you true. know, grind for a chain, dragon chain body. They're going to be like, what's a dragon chain body and why should I care? So, first of all, the first, like, that's like step two, step three in like the, yeah. like the, the, the life cycle of a player. Step mm -hmm. one is old school RuneScape is the game. Come and play old school RuneScape. It's a really cool game. And then once they've logged in, that's when you do everything you just listed, which is like, okay, yeah, you're in the game now. Here are some stuff. Here are some goals. Here's how you can do the stuff to do the goals, to reach the goals, for example. Yeah. So we have, what we need to do is like get better at the step one, which is bringing players in and then get better at the stuff you mentioned, which is like, guiding them and some yeah. of that isn't marketing some of it's gameplay as well like I've, yeah. obviously i haven't i haven't rejoined properly yet but i know in the time yeah. i've been away they've released things like the activity advisor which is super early game stuff but if that can be expanded for example i don't know how successful it was but if, if, it, if it was successful if that can be expanded well, yeah that then was... maybe we can kind of come at it with I, two things like we don't one know with gameplay <laughs> and one with marketing they so, haven't said anything about it well so, i think that yeah. was the i think that was the npc that was in lumbridge and he gave you like a power army strength family and stuff like that early game for like completing like yeah, like lumbridge is kind of overpowered nowadays like yeah. i'll be in lumbridge you can get there's a lot of stuff to do now you know when i was playing those new game modes i'm like well i can just go here and it was like helpful. a bunch of swords. It like, was that's kind of cool. It was just convenient. Like I mean, I've been playing Fresh Start Worlds recently. That's my series right now, and like being able to get a strength amulet in the first day instead of having to pay God knows what in the Grand Exchange when you have no GP was a you know is a big help. But um, you know, hearing all this like these ideas for like advertising, it makes me think of like how I would personally approach it. And I think, firstly, Jagex shouldn't do this because you guys have uh, you know dignity and whatnot to uphold and like you're very well established but if it were me i think i'd be like a little bit it would be like a bit like like guerrilla warfare so what i would do it, like say for example if jagex said to me hey rakes we're gonna pay you some money i want you to make an ad on why people who don't play this game should play this game i would look for similarities are you pitching an ad to me I am. <laughs> Dude, hire me. I would, li listen to this, though. What, what about taking... Go on, go on, go on. Take popular mobile games. Because there are mobile games that are so simple that have, like, millions mm -hmm. of downloads. It's ridiculous. And it's the most simple, like, brain-dead, just silly thing. But I would draw comparisons between those mobile games and things you can do in RuneScape. And it would be... It would always be like a... Like a this is this on this game, except from... You have there's like a paywall to get past to the next level. You can do this in RuneScape, but you just get the stuff yourself, and you you physically cannot pay extra money to do that. And, and like it might sound really like silly, but I know there's games out there where people like to, um, you know, they like Candy they Crush, <laughs> Candy Crush and such. But there's there's games out there where people like to organize oh, yeah. their their stuff. You know, it's like whether that's like in color, like you color coordinate yourself and stuff like that. It's like. I, listen, I hope this doesn't sound like super misogynistic, but like my my fiance is really, really into like keeping stuff in like orderly orderly fashion, right? Like she likes stuff to be ordered, things have to be clean and tidy. And like the amount of times I've been looking at my RuneScape bank and I'm just like, man, like if I actually got her into RuneScape, she would be like, I need to sort your bank out. Like your bank is a mess, man. Like let me like just clean that. And I know that people actually enjoy stuff like that. I'm kind of waffling at this point, but yeah, I think um, I would personally like draw similarities from these viral games and be like, because pretty much all of it is in RuneScape, because RuneScape is such like an old, well-thought-out game. It's solid. It's just like 
some of those things are way in the like way in the back somewhere like take the um i don't even know what it's called you know in birth rope the games room it's like birth you can go there and play connect four with the buddies yeah, do you know what i mean I, I don't know like there's there's things like that they're in the game <laughs> Tom, you know what I'm thinking of? Like when you say organizing a bank is an ad video, I'm thinking like those people cutting soap for like ASMR videos. And you just got like somebody slowly organizing a bank and someone's just like, yes, thank you. Right. Dude, I could see that being I, I'm, successful. I'm just seeing like the video clip of like, you know, like uh pink boater, like elegant or whatever that armor is called, the graceful and like pink and like, I don't know. I'm talking rubbish, but yeah, yeah, no. I, I was just thinking that you, you know, you were saying like, yeah, we need to just get better, like step one, because like that's where it all starts. And like, and then you know, Frixy brought about the whole idea of like simple games, right? I guess in a way, maybe at the start of RuneScape, we don't really have a simple game. Like people can just kind of like do right away and like just you know enjoy it, right? Per se, because like you know, if you play a game like Candy Crush. Like, the moment you play the game, you already know exactly the main objective, right? Whereas, like, if you play RuneScape, you get into RuneScape, you don't know what your main objective is. And then you can't really advertise it that way. Because, you know, instead of, like, because then you have to advertise the game and you have to say, like, ah, there's, you know, skills, there's quests, and there's bossing. But then, ultimately, it's like, okay, there's all of that, but what? why? You know, why do I play it? You know, I guess. Yeah. Whereas, like... So that reminds me, other... that's a really good point of... Yeah. Mm. The way Mini Clip used to advertise RuneScape. Mm. I'm, I'm on my phone now I'm trying to find what the messaging was, but it was kind of like be a baker or be a blacksmith or whatever. Yeah, you simple. Kind of, like, I think that we need something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. That would be, yeah, that what would if, be a cool way, like a niche way yeah, of what? like advertising something specific in the game that could be appealing to other people. I think that would be really cool. Yeah. The amount of time my yeah, friend like, like, for woodcutting for some reason. Just be a lumberjack. Well, the thing, yeah, you could be like, be a lumberjack. <laughs> We're like, I've got, yeah, man, <laughs> my, my friend who hasn't played RuneScape since he was a kid, constantly, whenever I see him, he's like, man, he's like, you killed any dragons recently? And I'm just like, like, actually thinking about it, just like, no, but that I sounds like a NPC in Skyrim. It's like, yeah. you, seen any, you killed any dragons recently? Like, he, he absolutely loves Skyrim, so he might actually uh, be memeing on me, Skyrim's and I don't great. know because I never, I never played it. But um, you know, I, I never played Skyrim. Skyrim is amazing. I picked, I picked it up for like five minutes, but I never properly played it. Like this is the put that game man, down. It's no old school. It's, it's no not, old school. It's that's the thing, man. Like, it's hey, though. listen, man. Like, I am pretty much old school like ride or die like runescape is it for me it's like there are so many games and it sounds really like i almost feel like a dick saying it and i feel elitist but there's some games that i just look at and i'm just like what is the point <laughs> like why would you waste your time on that oh you know, like, and it sounds tricks, awful yeah. but like i am you like, like town bro collecting the jelly beans i mean come on man the thing is i, I literally saw skyrim i was just like it's literally runescape but it's offline so why wouldn't i just play the real thing you know what I mean? Like that's that's literally I how think. I viewed it. I was like, it's literally or RuneScape, it... just a slightly better mm. graphics, and there's no I will people in the Nah, Skyrim's so different. I think. Skyrim's or it's different. time, bro. Skyrim was. Oh, it was great. When did it Nowadays, come out? Nowadays, that that was like when I was like 2011. Dude, it came out. Uh, it came out 11, 11, 11. That was like the huge marketing thing. Oh, See, wow. he look in his yeah. mind. He knows the day it came out. That's how special Skyrim is, dude. I yeah, don't know the day game. RuneScape came yeah. out. I, I told my friends, "Yo, I'm studying for this exam, so I'm not gonna hang out with you guys like during the winter break." And all I did was play Skyrim the whole day. <laughs> Constantly. No, no I, but... I did that with RuneScape so many times as a kid. I was like, "I'm not coming out. I'm I'm busy. I'm not allowed out. I'm grounded." But I'd be there playing RuneScape the whole time. <laughs> I'll skip Tell my us more. And stuff. Uh, Tell us more about like your RuneScape adventures as a kid. Like, do you have any really fond memories, or uh, maybe a golden achievement you got, or were you ever hacked? Like, that'll be the key to marketing. You know, it'll be the key. It'll be the key. so. The very first day I played was my next door neighbor just kind of knocked, and he was like, "Come around mine." I didn't have a PC at the time. Uh, yeah. We were eleven. I, we found I found the best game ever. I was like, "All right, it's cool." And we played games together all the time. Like, I had a PS2. He had a uh, another another console. GameCube. So we'd kind of share, probably a GameCube. Yes, sir. Nintendo. So I went around and he was playing RuneScape, and I was like, "Wait!" And the thing that really, really sold it for me was he kind of pointed like, "That's another person in the world. That's yeah. another person somewhere else." And that, as an eleven-year-old, blows your mind. Before <laughs> that, maybe at school I played like 
adventure quest like you know Bathalon and stuff yeah, which is fun but you weren't playing with other people and also yeah. it doesn't look that great and then this yeah. is coming from someone who works on RuneScape yeah so okay. that was awesome and then together we would just do the standard noob stuff of mine you know just south of Varrock run to Lumbridge to smelt it run back to Varrock to smith the bars and make the daggers and then sell them in the general store and make no money at all but we had a great time <laughs> My friends became members before I did. I kind of had to go and beg, like, for £3.20. It cost £3.20. I was like, Mom, please, all my friends are members. Please let me be a member. I had, like, a, I wrote something out to kind of prepare myself for it. Wow. All That's my smart. friends were, like, one of my buddies just kind of communicated it, that members was just, like, El Dorado, like, gold everywhere. <laughs> like, you, you're going to become a member, and you're going to make billions yeah. overnight. That kind of, like, ad. And I logged in, yeah. I was like, wait, I'm not, it's the it's same. not that easy. It's the same, just more places. <laughs> yeah, it's just the same. <laughs> but two days later, I got a medium clo uh, clue scroll, and I got like a, I think a, I think it's a kite shield, a black G kite shield, which I sold yeah. for 80k, which at the time was fine. You know, 80k was pretty good. That was Eldorado. A, a D-Med yeah. was probably like 3 mil, 4 mil at the time. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. But I was crap with money. I just couldn't keep, I was the kind of person to buy stuff, and then sell stuff for a loss. I'd be like, <laughs> I want to use Torax hammers because they look cool. And then I'd buy them and they'd be crap oh, and I'd sell them. God. And then I just couldn't understand how my mate would have a whip and have guffins. And I'm there like juggling a 400k bank. <laughs> well, I was just was not good with money. Was he, buying you were money? was he RW10 or what was he doing? No, he was just... He good at the game. He just day. he just knew what to do and to save money and what to buy. And he was kind of he wasn't playing efficient because we were just kids and there weren't you know the guides were just on Tippet and Rune HQ and stuff. He was good at but, reading. He was good at reading. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what he was. Like, I was not good at reading when I was you just like he also me, got into the clan before me. I'm telling you, man. Every time I talk about my old RuneScape memories, I'm talking like, oh, my Rune Skimmy. Or... And then Rice Cub's like, yeah, I remember doing God Wars. I'm like, what the yeah, fuck, dude? dude you were doing God, God Wars back right? then? No, I, I was a Barbarian that. Assault got, or a um, Stronghold, down. killing flesh crawlers. Right? He's over here, PKing people in full Arams. Completely Bro. different lives back then. Okay, look, look, look. All it took was me being at Brimhaven Agility Course, and then I just met a friend who knew all these max combat people. And then they just took me to God Wars one day, and I was like, whoa, I'm rich now, you know? And then things change. So, Every time yeah. I try to make friends, I'd end up in a trust trade party, bro. What the fuck, man? Yeah. <laughs> it, it kind of did change when I started joining clans. That's when... Yeah. yeah. Because then you've got somebody, like a clan leader, telling you, you need this gear. And you can't lose this gear. You need to bring this gear to the wilderness and you need to die in it. And you need to go and get some more and then go back and join the fight again and die in it. So all of a sudden I've got a goal, which is keep my bank stocked with supplies to be able to go and die 10 times on, on every Saturday night or something. Oh, mm. dude. Does that help? Do you have any um, prolific clan <laughs> memories back in the day? <clears throat> Most of them are heavily skewed towards the clan I ran. Uh, so I quit RuneScape in 2006 before like the removal of free trade and stuff, which blows people's mind. They're like, okay, yeah, most people quit in 2007, but I quit before then. So I missed that and I missed God Wars release and I missed summoning and that kind of thing too. But I came back in 2009, I'd broken a leg like one summer. So I just started playing RuneScape again because why not? And I found a clan. Some guy was like, Hey, do you want to join a clan? I was killing yaks. The, try and train because I'd lost out on three years worth of progress. I was like, yeah, sure. And he kind of pulled me along to a, a, a war in, in CWA. And again, I was just kind of fell in love. I was like, cool, this is what I was doing before I quit. I was fighting other clans, but this time I don't have to lose stuff because it's safe. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and then every, my, my gameplay just became around uh, spending the week making money to get better gear. So then on the weekend, I could, you know, have better gear to hopefully get chosen to, to the war in the in the stack ten in the ten versus tens or, or that yeah. kind of thing. That's that's literally the exact same way I've always seen money in RuneScape <clears throat> is you make money to be able to buy gear to PK in. And then that 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 was just the cycle. I've got the exact same thing except from you were doing multi PKing. Were you doing uh like max main PKing or like what what kind of combat bracket were you clanning as in multi? Main. 
main. So, you, yeah, yeah. so wait, wait, wait. So back in like 2000 and between 2004 and 2006, were you like a pretty high level at that time? <laughs> oh, but you're no, doing main PK in any way. Adam Fodder. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> they, you you your- have to consider like I was, I was 11 <laughs> in, know, in, 2000, right? in 2004, I was 11. <laughs> I joined a clan called MBK and uh, natural born killers. Um, natural born some people will recognize okay. the name. That sounds like a movie. Like it is. Yeah, it's from the movie. <laughs> like ah, yeah, yeah. Names back in the day for clans were amazing. <laughs> oh that that reminds me of one called Al Two K, and it was a single uh, Arim's PKing clan called License to Kill, and it had like the <sighs> most badass PKers in. Like you didn't fuck with Al Two K. It was like if you saw them spamming Al Two K, you were just gloried out. It was like peace, boys. <laughs> it's over. It's too powerful. <laughs> yeah, but these these guys running the clan were they don't old. They were must have been late teens or something. Oh, absolutely. and then now they're probably in their forties or like late thirties, which is funny to think. I know actually, I know the leader. I think he's a I think he's a lawyer or something now. Wow. But at the time, wow, you know, we were using Swift Switch and IRC chat, and that's how you kind of organized each other. It might have been Swift Kit or Swift Switch. Yeah, Swift Switch I, was I think, first, I and then Swift Kit replaced it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So IRC was built into it, which is amazing, because then all of a sudden you communicate about RuneScape, about being in RuneScape, and you know, no sensor and stuff. The first disco. So, yeah, man, it's oh, like, it totally Lee. was. Oh, do, do you remember an old and school clan in Morty called DI or Damage Incorporated? Does that ring a bell? Yeah, you, I've I've worn them tons of times. Uh, oh, that's awesome, man. <clears throat> mm. Two Cold Killer, I think, was his leader, and then Spike was one of the leaders too. Rings a bell. I remember. Well, the, the leader I remember... No, I'm confusing him so, with Dynasty Elites, but I do remember DI. It's completely separate. The, I'm, I'm confusing him with DE. The, my bad. The leader's yeah. name was GHJJF. That was his name. GHJJF. Random as hell. That dude was... He, so every single... like I'm telling you, man, this, this dude played for like 10 plus years or whatever it was, just warring. <laughs> These were the clans, by the way, back in the day when... You know, they they wore for like 24 hours plus on the weekend, like nonstop. Mm-hmm. This dude wore the same thing. He had a rune full helm, a rune chain body, rune legs and a whip and a rune kite. That's all he had. Like throughout history, that's all that dude had. <laughs> history. No, uh, no, serious, man. Because I remember seeing him like years apart. He only ever trained his melee stats. He had like 100 mil plus in like attack, strength, defense, whatever back in those days. And that, he had like one in everything else. Like he was literally just a bot for multi, but he was like the head dude. And and it was just like, he, he was this massive figure back in the day. And uh, sorry, but Damage Incorporated was a team that I always admired because it was like the very last honor, honor clan that existed in the Wildy. So effectively what with that clan, their rules were, if they ever prayed against somebody, they would get kicked out of the clan. The only time they were allowed to pray is if the person they were fighting prayed against them first. And if it wasn't the case, they'd get kicked from the clan, like, no question. But, sorry. Keep on uh-huh. going, dude. No, that's cool. They would not invite me to that clan, bro. I have zero mm, I love honor. I, I couldn't get into it either, man. Like, they, I was already uh, at that point. <laughs> I've got a, quite a funny story. So, I joined a random clan. I can't remember the name of them. Something to do with dragons, probably. Or warriors. Dragon warriors. I don't know. No name clan. <laughs> Okay. And for whatever reason I left I left and I left out I left with like a really angry forum post. Can't remember why. I don't know what I was so sorry about. But then they started messaging me in game, like the leaders, and there were two brothers who led the clan. I think they were brothers. And then we just started cussing each other out. <laughs> and Sounds like a I was I was I joined Jagex like ten years later, probably longer. Yeah, about probably about ten years later, and I was just going through out of curiosity my old snapshots, well, what people had reported me for, and I had a report from for this kind of like back and forth, and I was like, "Oh, okay," and I looked at the username and stuff. I was like, "All right," I remembered it, and then maybe like a week later, the staff high schools. So in Jagex, we kind of like populate high schools and share them around with each other, like what JMods are you know gaining XP this week. And then the accountant who reported me was there. And I was like, yo, what? <laughs> and it was a guy who works in QA for RS3. 
And I was like, do you remember me? And he was like, Hello. yeah. And then we looked at his snapshots and I'd reported him and he'd reported me. And we're like, dude, we, we hated each other 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is so god. cool, that's man. Funny. Oh my god, that's, that's hilarious. That is insane. What, what, oh my, what, was, like, what was the outcome of that? Did you guys fight it out in real life in the office? or <laughs> Parking lot. <laughs> That's amazing. That's it was funny. more of a wow. We were idiots. Jeez, <laughs> that's oh, actually man. hilarious. That is actually that is so good. It's like I'll never talk to you again. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they, they were like sworn sworn enemies from that day forward, man. Like they always just yeah. like gave each other nasty <laughs> looks in the office. That was your IRL <laughs> rival, dude. You just didn't know it. That oh, was dude. the rival right there, dude. The that's, Gary that's... to my ash. Yeah, <laughs> the Gary to my ash. So I think got... of ash. If, I'm just I've got, I'm I've got, we've yeah, got, these two. we've got through all the fun stuff now. I have a bit of a, a more hard hitting question for you. So just right. straight and simple. I was just wondering, why did you leave Jagex when you left a year ago? It was, I really just wanted a new challenge. Um, I'd almost left before that. I'd have offers from other studios. Um, and then, you know, I'd always work things out of Jagex. We're like, okay, cool. This is why you want to leave. Well, what if we, you know, help put you on this training and you can focus on this and you can learn this and also maybe change salary and that kind of thing too. But it kind of came to a point where I just, I did want to do something different. I'd, I'd worked at Jagex. That was my only job in games. And I'd been there at the time for what, six, nearly seven years. I don't know if some people will hear it and be like, why would you ever want to leave a games job? You love, like, I love the game. It's my dream to work for a game. But eventually, it's just, you, you realize it's just like any other job in that. You want to try and do something new. For me, I wanted to release a new game. That was the whole thing. I had an awesome community, the RuneScape community, but I kind of inherited it. I wanted to go and try and launch something. So that's, that's what I did. I went to um, a studio working on a project that hadn't come out yet. I was like, cool, this is perfect for me. This is what I want to do. Okay. So, um, how'd, how'd that go, by the way? Yeah, that was literally going to be the follow up question. What, 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 <laughs> what, what, what was the studio? What, what exactly were you working on? So, the studio was, well, before that, I, had, I, had a, I was really lucky. I had, I had quite a few offers. Um, I'd actually accepted an offer to go and move to California to go and work for Blizzard, which is really cool. Uh, wow. I almost did that. Damn. But, Blizzard had a very turbulent mm -hmm. summer last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was like, this isn't really the studio for me right now. I'm glad to see him on the, on the up again. Like everything seems to be going pretty well. The new WoW expansion looks great. Diablo 4 looks pretty cool. It's coming out soon. So now it's kind of like, damn, I might have made the wrong decision here. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but I joined CCP Games, who probably best known for EVE Online, another MMO. Yeah, yeah. But they're based in Iceland, but they had a, a newish studio in London, which is the one I joined. And they were working on, and it hasn't been announced yet. So I'm trying to like remember what can I say. It's a sci-fi FPS, okay. tactical mm. sci-fi FPS. Yeah, that sounds cool. Like a battle royale ish, or five. It's a tactical sci-fi FPS. That's how you can say it. Right. <laughs> my bad. I want to. Oh, oh sorry. That's really interesting. It's really, cool. no, it's, it's, it's really cool though. It's a really cool project. Yeah. Okay. That's really cool how you've gone from working like runescape which is quite a hard game to pick up so i played eve in the period of time mm -hmm. when runescape became runescape free uh, it was the dark time mm -hmm. of runescape man for me and i had to fill that void of runescape so i was trying out world warcraft i, I tried basically everything you can f think of like rift online the withdrawals eve was oh, one rift. of them because I, I worked with a guy in a factory at the time and i remember he described to me what eve was like and I was like, oh my god, it sounds just like PKing. He was telling me like people will like warp to yeah. somewhere in space, and then you can like put an anti warp gun on them, which effectively oh, is like I a tele block. About that. And then you can <laughs> kill them and take their shit. And I was like, wow, this sounds amazing. And uh, yeah, I downloaded the game, and I, I, bro, that game was way too big brain for me. It was insane. <laughs> like the learning curve on Eve Online. Oh my, just like being able to like move. Like the process and moving your ship from like it's it's just on a different level. But I I really appreciated like how the people that played it, that community of people, were clearly like it, it's a game for life. Do you know what I mean? Like those dudes, yeah. those dudes love that stuff. 
Which I was lucky enough to go to the their equivalent of RuneFest. They're called FanFest. Like, uh, early this year in Iceland, in May. Oh. And it is people who've played the game for ages. And their their player base kind of skews a bit older than RuneScapes as well. So the guys oh, are older yeah. than me. And they've been playing for 20 years. I think I think Eve Online's approaching 20 next yeah. year. I think yeah. it's the 20th birthday. And you, so you've got these alliances, uh, guilds, clans, whatever, who have been around for, for, for ages and they've just been, been rivals with each other for that long. They've been friends and allies with each other for that long. It's cool. The definite parallels to, to, to RuneScape and Jagex. So even though I was working on the, on the MMO, like, no, on the FPS, sorry, I was still talking to the guys working on the MMO, like on Slack and email and stuff. So I was able to kind of share some experiences and learnings with them. Like, okay, this is what I did on RuneScape or Jagex. You might find it useful. And I got to go there. I got to go to visit Iceland like four or five times in the oh, year that's, that's I was there, which awesome. is all, it was, it was so cool. What a perk. That's so cool. And did, the people there are lovely. Did you manage to travel at all while you were over there? Or was it just like strictly business? It was mostly business. I wasn't able to kind of travel and see like the Northern Lights or anything, oh, but I had man. enough time to go and eat at really great restaurants. And the restaurants there were amazing and get drunk every night. So <laughs> I didn't travel, but I did get looked after quite nicely. Man, that sounds amazing. And I mean, yeah. so my next question kind of follows up from that. Because um, I, I had a little bit of insight that I, I kind of roughly knew kind of what you were doing from a conversation we had a while back. Um, mm. So when you left working at Jagex, and by the way, the reason why I thought it was way longer than a year ago is because I have such a vivid memory of Moda Isa had left. I know that you're really good friends with Iusa, like you're good mates from real life. Mm -hmm. And it's like he came back to Jagex and literally like just as he comes back, you left. And it was just like, no, like it's like the two like because <laughs> you guys are good friends, you did like the bot busting together. It was like you're both like reunited and then you left like a few weeks later or whatever it was, and I was a bit devastated by it. But um I was gonna ask when you did leave, was it difficult to detach yourself? from the community like what what was that process like and what was it like experiencing like a new community like the eve online community cool um a couple of questions there yes, firstly sir. with the aiza stuff it's quite it's quite funny because i was his i was his boss and i would i had tried to bring him back and i i you know i, I succeeded i was successful and then i had to turn around I don't think it was quite instantly, but it was a few months at least. And turn around, we're like, hey, I know I brought you back and we were going to be like a dream team and stuff, but I'm leaving. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I was really devastated about that, by the way. Because I knew how, yeah. how well you two got on because I've also I've had the pleasure of being there with you dudes in real life. And it's like, I could see you guys were good friends. That was it's quite like, Yeah, we're good buds. Like, um, you know, separating. There's like a couple of us, me, Aiza, Archie, and, and Cam, or X Mod Cam. We, we hang out a lot, play lots of games together. It was, it was fun. It was a. I'm glad to be working back with him. Even now, mm -hmm. I'm. I get to work with him pretty closely. This That's is great. Nice. Yeah, they can what, make a movie what, out of this, man. Part two. <laughs> yeah. what, what are you? Uh, what are you looking forward to most? Rejoining <laughs> Old School Rescape. Um, delivering on some really long-standing promises like account security and stuff. I just, I just want to see that box tick. And <sighs> We can kind of move on with our lives and then yes, right. have the next yeah, thing honestly, to complain it, about and solve. It's been on my mental for years, ever since well, they your announced Your bank's like it. 40 bill, bro. Of course, man. You honestly, got like five like, cars in there. No, I mean, like, like for the viewers, man, like, I, like I've literally known people that started their accounts from, from the start. And then they tell me their progress. And then ultimately, they're like, yo, man, I quit. I got hacked. I'm like, bro. You know, it's... Mm. It's terrible. I, I go so through earlier, these, earlier like, today. I had the terrible. pleasure of doing internal testing for Jagex accounts, which was announced at the summit. Yeah, and that's uh, best what news. It, best news. Yeah, what it what it does is it's you create a brand new like umbrella account, the Jagex account, which you then attach RuneScape accounts to, mm. and then the Jagex account has like the uh, security features attached. So we're doing internal testing at the moment. I think we're gonna we're hoping to do some external testing with like P mods and creators in January, and then however that goes, we'll determine. We'll roll out some more testing. Stuff. Sign but me it, up. Went, it was seamless. It was it was seamless. I now have a Jagex account. It means that I 
log in with that one account and then I can choose between all my different accounts and stuff. It's cool. Okay. Yeah, it's, it seems like the Winter Summit was just kind of like taking all the problems that we ever had and then just going, here's a solve, here's a fix, here's what we're doing. <laughs> Would that be like the the Jagex account? Is that what you're looking forward to most for the Winter Summit, the six-month roadmap, or are your eyes somewhere else? Well, that's probably quite a trend here in terms of what I'm looking forward to, is bringing stuff that players have wanted or expected for a long time. So Bounty Hunter as well. I might mm-hmm. play a little bit. I probably won't play much because I'm not good. But PKs uh, have been looking for a replacement to Bounty Hunter for ever since we removed it. So it'll be nice to give them that content to play. I'm looking forward to Desert Treasure 2 because whilst it wasn't like an explosive moment like mobile, Dragon Slayer 2 kind of marked a really steady shift upward, like a slightly Standard. steeper incline. Uh, yeah. And I think Desert Treasure 2... Nostalgia, Desert Treasure, people remember that. People remember grinding and the ghostly robes and the ancient staff and the, you know, the sound effect of the ice barrage. I think we can really play into nostalgia, but also have a great quest with great rewards as well. Oh, yeah. Man, you're getting me hyped, bro. We got like the dream team and a beautiful six month I mean, roadmap, bro. You, you, oh, could, you, could t- you could tell, you know, like based on how nuanced our conversation has been, like the, that. There's just a lot of experience, you know, like coming back to the team of old school. I feel like obviously this is a really welcoming thing for me because like, first of all, there's a lot of new JMods, right? And there's so many now. I just don't really know how reliable they are. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying they aren't reliable. I just don't know anymore. It's hard to keep up. Whereas back in the day when you, you know, when you kind of start showing up, the team was still very small and I was able to like keep track of all the, you know, 10 to 20 old school mods. And I just remember, you know, Back then, like you guys knew your stuff well, like it, you know, just definitely proved time and time again. So it's nice to have uh, an OG mob back it's with a, all that it's experience. It's a good sign, you know? man. It's yeah, it, it's a good sign for sure. Um, if we can touch back real quick on the umbrella account, so the security measures that are coming in. So forgive me because I I may have missed something here in the winter summit regarding that. Um, this is obviously supposed to be. Uh, a solve to like the account security problems we have and i i'm sorry if this has already been said but i guess my first question is is like what's the difference between somebody being able to guess your username and password now or hacking your email versus the security on the umbrella account like is there a fundamental difference there or or like what's the deal yep. there mfa backup codes all sorts like Let's actual go. modern okay like security yeah. measures you'd expect Backup from any other codes, account man. anywhere else yeah okay that's cool uh more like more com- uh on the our, on our youtube channel is i think we published the standalone tech section it's really short okay. uh mod five uh, mod uh kind of talks about jagged's accounts in a little bit more detail and then as we get ready to roll out the beginning stage of external testing next month that's when we'll talk about it in a lot more detail I'm probably not doing it justice at all, but I'm I'm stoked for it. Yeah, it's kind of thing, MFA... like, I knew I knew we were working on this before I quit, like years ago, but it wasn't at the stage where we could talk about it. That's uh... the really frustrating thing. No one asked this question, but here's an answer to like what's one of the most frustrating things is working on the stuff that we know players will love and players will want it and expect, but not being at the stage where you can talk about it just yet. Yeah, that must be torture, mm. man. God. Especially, especially if yeah, you're like, like upset about something, and it's like you have the answer yeah. that's been worked on, but you can't talk about it's it. It's gonna be good, just wait. But you can't even say that. You yeah, just no, I go. just, I just hated how like like three years ago or something, they promised they bring it like at a certain time frame, and then like it can always miss the mark, you know. And mm-hmm. like it was supposed to be this year, because I remember the start of this year they said they're gonna you know do the thing with the account security, but now it turns out it's gonna be next year, and I really hope it's actually next year, you know, right? Like I, I hope so, but. Well, yeah, it's just like it's always. Like, so, I mean, I'm, I've got the so. internal testing going already. Like, yeah, that's so great news. I, I, I'm very I, I happy speak to, to hear. this year. Very, very happy. So on the Jagex yeah. website and like the launcher tab, they've had, they published a roadmap at the start of the year, like 2022 to 2023, and it's pretty much hit every point of it. Account merge being right at the end, which is probably going to bleed into 2023. But that's what it yeah, says anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's but okay. Yeah, it's not dude, as bad. <laughs> no, no, you're right. Like that, we we published a blog in 2018 and 2019. Yeah. All we can say is, at the time, what we were saying was true, but studio priorities change, and it becomes hard to kind of communicate that. Yeah, yeah right. it got lost because I, I just felt like, damn, did we just like totally, you know, pretend like it didn't happen or something, you know? Because like it, it wasn't like, like, like a, okay, you know? here's the blog, shut up, 
It wasn't like it <laughs> yeah. wasn't one of those. But yeah. it was a it was true at the time we communicated yeah, it and it sucks that it wasn't true. But I'm I'm glad we are bringing yeah, it yeah. finally to a close. And it's never too late. That's all I say. That's a, that's my piece of optimism, you know, never yeah. too late. <laughs> so everything should be coming uh, out on time this year is, is what you're <laughs> kind of telling us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, there's, like, there's like 10 days left this year. But yeah, it's, oh, it's sorry, coming out soon. Next year. It's I'm already out. in the yeah. mindset yeah. of next year. Oh, right. I keep telling my, my viewers, I'm like, dude, I feel so confident in the team. The Winter Summit was, was great. It, it was well showcased, documented. The roadmap looks great what is everyone worried about this year has been honestly pretty good but i guess just so many burns in the past people are just kind of mm. second guessing everything so i've been just reassuring everyone's like it looks really good yeah only earlier I, i'm dude I'm, I'm glad to hear that because i'm as excited as, as you guys are i'm going back to jagex but i'm not a full-time <laughs> jmod yet i'm still part-time consultant at the moment but i'm still i'm stoked like if i was if i didn't really believe in the future of the game i wouldn't have rejoined mm. I've yeah. been doing consultancy for the last four or five months from three different studios, like, which is crazy. And it, it burnt me out big time because it's too much work. Yeah. But I didn't need to go back to Jack X. I've gone back because I wanted to go back. Hell yeah. Dude, that's, that's, that's like... one question we didn't ask, but we know yeah, the answer to that, that's like, Well, yeah. I'm, do you know what? I've got the list of questions in front of me and we've done like this massive, like, we, like everywhere. Probably, yeah. <laughs> But that, that Which, yeah, we're flowing really good. good. I think that's. The I think thing. I think good. I think that's a really good way of putting it. It's like going back to Jagex wasn't like your last ditch effort. It's like you've got many choices and you've <laughs> chosen to go back because obviously you you have passion there, which is amazing. Um, and speaking of, we recently had, and I'm sure you know him yourself. We had Manked Up Mage on here last podcast. Yep who recently announced as well that he's been accepted as a jmod which makes me so happy and um it's very cool yeah i i really i'm so stoked for him honestly because like I, i've got so much admiration for someone like that like manx who like he wanted something he didn't know how to code he didn't know how to do any of uh, any of the things which were required of him to be able to do the job and he just went and learned it and then he applied and mm -hmm. he got the job it's just like fair play to you man that's amazing um, nah, dedication is real. So, so I've got a question here, and I was just I was just curious. Um, obviously you've worked at Jagex before, so with reapplying to Jagex, was the process of being interviewed or like like was it different at all, or was it just kind of like I'm back, boys? Like what was the deal with Bro, he, he, he smoked office. a cigar and was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm when, when I'm I did, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't walk in and be like, by the way, guys, I'm coming back. Here's the job I want. Here's my new title. It was a, it was funny because. At the time, I was really bought into doing the, the self-employed stuff. Like I started my own company and it was going well. I'd signed like contracts and stuff. I signed the Jagex contract. I was like, cool. I've got work for the next six months banked, which is great as a self, someone self-employed. Like you've got mm -hmm. half a year where you can pay your rent and, and, and save money and enough. But I think it just went really well, really quickly. And then the guy who is going to be my boss was like, hey, we've got a job, a permanent job. And I was like, dude, don't do this to me. I'm really happy about what I'm doing now. I've just got my head around like my, my plan for the business and stuff. And then we just kept having conversations about what the role would be and that kind of thing. And it just eventually became the right decision. I, I realized that I couldn't sustain doing what I'm still doing, which is like 60, 70 hour weeks with three different studios, two different time zones and stuff. And I became more and more reintroduced to the default of old school RuneScape and like more privy to like longer term plans. And that was a lot of what was convinced me as well. I was like, hey, I want assurances on, you know, the future of old school, what we're doing as a studio, that type of thing too. And I, I liked what I heard. And I, um, everyone's been great too. Like so many messages, people who aren't working in old school, just dropping me messages like, hey, it's great to see you back. I hear you're doing good stuff. Like from COOs and CEO and stuff. There's, Everyone's really nice and friendly. That's so nice to hear. Yeah, honestly, I like I like that kind of workplace mm. professionalism and, and and kinship, especially for the game you main. You know, <laughs> makes you feel good. Mm. I've made a ton of friends at Jagex, like life changing friends and relationships. Uh, this summer as well. So every year we kind of put together like a five a side soccer team. Um, we we play in like a games industry tournament and we won for the first we've come close so many times like semi-final lost in the final and penalties and stuff the and we World won Cup. for the first time 
Kind of, yeah. And I, at the time, I was I played for Jurgens, but I wasn't an employee. And I heard that maybe next year we'd be clamping down on that. So I was like, okay, well, I want to play for Jurgens again. So maybe I guess I'll rejoin. That's the real reason you got the back job. to you back were the world champions. champions in the soccer game for sure. Right? So yeah. yeah, what what do you think? What do you think is like forms like such a a solid relationship? Like because you're you're really good friends with Aiza. You're really good friends with I think you said Cam and Chris Archie. So do you do you, what do you like put that down to because i'm sure you could go and work at any job and it's like you're gonna make friends and stuff but as you put it you've made lifetime friends like is there anything you can like put that down to and i'm kind of i'm hinting it hoping it's the fact that you all have runescape in common because i've always <laughs> found that like friends of mine who've played runescape like my best friend we became friends through runescape like in year seven and we're both now going to turn 30 next year. And it's like, we see each other on a weekly basis. And that whole friendship came from RuneScape. But anyways, I, I'm just wondering, like, what is it do you think that made you bond so well with these people who you've continued to work with? I use this funny one because we were both interviewing for the same job. And I got it. And that was our first introduction was interviewing oh. <laughs> and competing against each other. Yeah, but it's funny because one of the exercises, There's... like this, is way back in 2017. One of the exercises was a group uh, exercise assignment, and who was it? It was me, Mod Wolf, and Aiza, the three of us competing for this one community manager job. And one by one, we we're kind of taken out to go and do a, uh, an interview with a panel, while the other two, whoever was remaining, would carry on working with the group assignment. And I, I love Mod Wolf, Jay, awesome, we're like a good friend. But me and Aiza, when it was our turn to kind of work just the two of us together, we were like, damn, I wish there were two jobs because we're just, everything we're doing just seems to kind of complement one another. Ah. So even then, competing against each, even competing against each other, we were like, we want to work together. That's what we want to do. So it was become kind of natural. And then when he eventually got the job, I'm not sure which really cements it or gels it. I think it was have a similar approach to how we want to treat players and respect people's times and efforts and not undermine anything like that <clears throat> and similar work ethic as well we, we just want to work hard and get a job done we we like to moan but we don't moan about like we just we we, we kind of get our heads down and get stuff done yeah and then we then we'll then we'll moan and whine about it afterwards for example so yeah. we're quite similar that way yeah that's good i it's definitely one of those things man i've worked in i mean to be honest with you outside of what i'm doing now <laughs> content creation I've only ever worked pretty much like dead end jobs and oh my god like the moan mentality that is just it, I think it's just a British thing man like us Brits like everybody just <laughs> moans but sometimes it really grates you down to the point where you're just like it's all I'm hearing man is there any positivity like so yeah I, I like that approach as well like being able to like have a moan after you've got the hard work done it's mm -hmm. defi definitely definitely the way to do it we used to moan about players all the time as well. We, we've got oh, like yeah. our own, we, we have like a funny voice we do to each other, which is how we think players sound. I'm not going to do it, but we will, we will verbalize what we think players are saying to each other and just make each other laugh. And I think when you can kind of make it, when you can kind of make what seems to be the biggest deal right now and reduce it to being something funny, then you can just kind of get over it, right? You can just kind of close it off and then move on and then, figure out how to tackle it or move on to the next thing. Yeah. What, what about you and Chris Archie? Like, how, how did you two become good friends? He's alive, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't really see Chris anymore, but he's such <laughs> like a massive figure. Well, he is for me. He is. He's game. still there behind he's, the he scenes. He's, he's making video there. content. He's one of our video producers at Jagex. Like, he's, he's enjoying it. He's loving it. He prefers not being in the limelight. Yeah. Uh, so I wonder what changed. Had... Yeah, I wonder what changed with regards to that, you know? Right, well, he like, had to do uh, a and a like week after week after week after week after week after week mm. after week. I think he was kind of like, he wanted to move on to something else. So he, he, uh, he learned a ton yeah. of new skills and he's making great content, great videos. A lot of the stuff he's doing on the channel is by him. That's um, cool. He's still a video what, creator at heart, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, and his little cameo in the Bounty Hunter video is fantastic as well. I don't know if you've seen it with him <laughs> and Kieran. I loved it. it was good. I loved it. Oh, yeah. Good. I mean, yes. Yeah, I think with me and Chris, it was. Um, first of all, he was like, "Oh, cool, someone to go to the gym with." Just join the old school team, so we'd go to the gym together, and we. That's a bond. I That's kind an of, easy bond. 
Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. That kind of so that kind of thing outside of the job, which is like, all right, we play football, we'll go to the gym, and then you'd spend more time together. And you, um, but again, we have quite similar personalities, and it's easy. It was easy to gel. It's funny though. At the time, he's worked on this. He's much better at this. I hope he doesn't mind me saying it. He's not the best at meeting people for the first time. Kind of rude seeming, but he's not. He doesn't mean anything by it. But you're like, oh, well, fuck you too, dude. But once you get to know him, he's <laughs> It's funny because I've met Archie at a lot of events and um, he, he was a really cool guy once you started talking to him. But I, yeah, for sure. Yeah. He has that kind of energy a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't yeah. remember the first mm-hmm. time. I can't remember the first time meeting Chris, but I remember like I've watched, mm-hmm. dude. I've watched Chris Archie like from like his inception. From I don't even know if you guys followed him back then, but when he was that, a YouTuber, that, that intro, that intro. Dude, all I did yeah. was watch videos. On but, but, but the, back f- then. the thing yeah. is, like a oh, lot yeah. of people think of Chris Archie prods, which was the highlight channel. But he like he had his main YouTube channel that is now no longer even a thing. Like it got deleted with like a Chris Archie Spark Mac beef like over ten years ago. <laughs> but he used to upload yeah. he used to upload like a PK video every single day. And it was just like I can't even remember the first time I've seen Chris. But yeah, I, I it, it's one of those things like he moved from Canada. Like he lived in Canada and then he moved to the UK, started a whole new life. It's just like I, I do think about that. I'm like, man, that's that's just a crazy thing to go through all through RuneScape, mm. all of it. Because yeah, it's huge. It's all impressive. All it takes. All yeah. it takes. Because he he got hired by Jagex, which seems crazy at the time because they hired a bunch of YouTubers, some of which worked out. Chris was one of the ones that did, and it's just like the whole thing. And Kyrian, Kyrian was a uh, also he was with like Rune Sharks uh, group. Ki- so. Mod Kieran. Yeah, yeah, he used to be like Fairy Tale or something RS or something like Fairy that. Fairy Tale RS, he, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. He joined like a so I think Chris joined in 2014. Kieran joined in QA not long before I joined Jagex, so like mid 2015, I think. I might be mistaken. So I think mean, yeah, that was kind of after the the time when Jagex were hiring content creators, but Kieran just happened to have that experience, and he was like a recent graduate as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Dude, I remember one RuneFest actually sitting down and I was like separated from the people I was with. They're like behind me in the row behind. Uh, and I sat down, I looked to the right and there was just like four people. They were just smiling at me like really nice guys. I was like, hey, how are you guys doing? And I didn't even know this. It was James and uh, forgive me, the other guy from RuneShark. Simon? Yeah, yeah it was those dudes yeah. with like their partners. And I was like, what? I was like, oh, I'm really sorry. Because I think um, mm-hmm. one of their partners, it was a lady next to me. She was like, she was like, this is James from Thing. And I was like, what? I was like, these are the Rune Shark guys? I was like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> and I feel so dumb for not knowing. <laughs> which, which, speaking See, of... I, oh, sorry, mm. go, go, you go. I was going to say, like, I kind of stopped playing RuneScape around the time Chris probably started making videos. So I knew he was Mod Archie, but I didn't realize he had kind of like a I- iconic YouTube history behind him. So I, was, I just thought he was <laughs> yeah. some dude who worked on Old School RuneScape. I didn't, and then I, you know, I've been out of him and, and players see him and they're like, "Oh my god, you're Chris Archie!" I'm like, "Dude, you're just a J Mod. Why do people always like you know, I make YouTube videos and stuff?" Yeah, dude. Celebrity That's first, J Mod second. <laughs> Notorious. Yeah. I don't think Chris people Archie. forget. He was definitely one of like the first, like. Big ones, you know, for RuneScape for sure. Oh, he was like absolutely enormous. Like for back then as well. Like it was yeah, yeah. the size of his channel back in those days to have like over 100k subs, which he far yeah, surpassed and... and he had more than one channel was just crazy. Yeah. But um, definitely spe- inspired. Speaking yeah. of RuneFest, I-, I don't know if you're allowed to like talk about this stuff or not, but like, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about the Winter Summit. I think that. You know, I, I think that things like the Winter Summit is, is a really good example of, like, keeping player morale at a high. Like just, For just, sure. Just knowing, like, things are coming, things are being worked on. Because there, there have seemed to be, like, during the COVID time, like, just kind of, like, big blanks. Where there's not much information coming out. And it seems like nothing's really being worked on. But it is, obviously. Um, and I think that RuneFest was one of those, like, huge times of year where it was, like, you got to see everything that was being worked on, things that were being spoken about. And um, 
do you have any insight into you know if they're planning to do another RuneFest next year or if they're planning to run any more like content creator or community member driven uh, events like they used to do like pre-COVID? It's a tough one. So I, I don't have like a, an answer to confirm or, or not. I'm at the moment I'm just contracting, so I haven't worked on. Basically, I'm, I'm given projects to work on, and that isn't one of them. Maybe I'll find out more next month or something. I don't know. But so I mentioned earlier, right? I went to FanFest at Eve Online. Yeah. Um, we that pretty much caused like a huge COVID outbreak in Reykjavik, Iceland. Like even yeah. now, you have wow. these events and gatherings, and then the stuff happens. And I think you just need to. I don't know. Someone decides whether or not that's acceptable or unacceptable. Because if it, if it's acceptable, fine, go ahead. But if it's unacceptable, then you can't. Yeah. I think PAX East as well last year. I think somebody died from like complications caused by covid or something as well just because you know it's a, gab it's a game gathering so even though like life is back to normal because it is that's just the, the way it is there aren't any lockdowns yeah. and stuff anymore there are still like stuff to be wary of with conventions i love conventions for me personally i'm happy to take the risk i'd, I'd love like another room fest but there are there are i think i'm saying like there are other things to consider too yeah. so it's why we went to the summit mode, which is how can we take all the good stuff you mentioned about RuneFest, like keeping players informed and keeping players like abreast of all the developments and deliver it more digitally. And my hope is that, you know, RuneFest comes back and we can just do it in the summer or the winter and be like, it's the winter summit at RuneFest and do it as we do, but keep the summits as a pub. I think the summit works better than RuneFest because RuneFest is once a year. And if we're talking about missed deadlines, RuneFest is like the home of missed deadlines because <laughs> you're trying to predict what you're doing 12 months in the future. Yeah. Whereas with the summit, what we're doing is like, okay, six months. We've got a lot of clarity on the next two to three months for sure. Then it gets a bit more ambiguous, but we kind of know what we're doing three to six months out. And then the six months onward, it gets a bit more murky. Now we kind of know what we want to do in seven, eight months, nine months time, but we'll tell you about that later. Yeah. It's I'd rather under promise over deliver yeah yeah for sure don't want to take away from you know people that's like mm. kind of like the thing that i've noticed i think i think with updates too i think the... i want to give you guys a chance to meet each other in real life and meet your fans oh, and meet yeah. players and stuff too yeah. like home the con convention like i think any like future of Infest shouldn't be about reveals it should be yeah it's actually like twitch and stuff it should be Here's about one. giving giving our players a chance to meet their clan mates Meet their favorite content creators. Meet J mods, for example. Yeah, One TwitchCon day. is what we how we did it recently. It was a great time. Um, Everyone got yeah. Omicron, like you were saying. Oh yeah, <laughs> every loser, <laughs> bro. They uh, made the little pregnancy uh, test joke. Uh oh, I got it. And they had like two lines and shit. I, I but... surprisingly <laughs> didn't get it, dude. Uh, so <laughs> little tangent. Last oh day, I'm saying of Rice Cup. I feel like shit. I'm pretty sure I have it. My boy Carlos feels like shit. Rice Cup's just sitting there with a smile like, like, all right, what are we talking about? And Rice is like, yeah, I might go for a run when I get home. I did, actually. It was Fuck, dude. Was a was going for a five-mile run. Everyone else is dying. <laughs> Jesus, I was similar at FanFest. Um, I uh, had work to do in the evening, so I didn't go to like the big after party. And that must have been the catalyst for it. Because then the next oh, day, yeah. people started dropping like flies. <laughs> and I was in the hotel gym. And then I went to my flight home. And people were just on Slack being like, I'm sick, I can't work. I'm sick, I can't work. And I'm like, damn, I wish I was sick because I can work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, oh, I've, man, not, yeah. I've not had it a single time. I, I've never had a positive. Whoa. I've never had a positive test. I think I think I've yeah, had a. It's because you're in peak time, condition, yeah. Rakesy. I am. Dude. You, <laughs> I, I just. I mean, you're indoors. Corners. You're you're, you're actually more thing. indoors than us, probably. This this is <laughs> the thing. Like, I don't know about whereabouts right. you guys live, but like, my job doesn't entail me with me interacting with anybody apart from this screen. So it's like, yeah. And I live. You in live country. in a farm area. Yeah, I, right. I literally live in the country, so it's like I I've not had it a single time. Um, yeah, that's true. You know. I, well, I've never <clears> been positive. I think I did, but I, it came up as negative. But I had like all the symptoms. But you know, it could it could be whatever. You know, but it's it's three certain, times. Yeah, certainly Damn. similar to a flu in a lot of ways. So yeah, I think I've had it three times as well. Not I just, fun. Yeah. Not I just fun. really hope they do bring back a rune fest because I I am definitely missing like that interaction and, and also one like, day all of the events that we did alongside that. I mean. 
Like we, there used to be Dead Man Mode events. There was the PvP All Stars. You were definitely there for Bro, PvP just, All Stars. Just do a Tarkov event, you know, like a uh, reimagining of Dead Man Mode, Tarkov style. Done. There you go. But the, <laughs> they know one like Tarkov. <laughs> those things were so yeah. good. Like they were so good. Like for yeah. for me personally, like meeting up with like other content creators was. You'd always come away from it feeling so motivated, and it would be like I always kind of thought of it as like like these dudes like Mint and Rice. I kind of see them as like my colleagues that I never meet, but you know we're both working on the game. Nah, it's just it's just you, bro. It's just you. It's just just me at the end of the day. So yeah, yeah it's it, just you, dude. It, 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 you I've seen what? Mint plenty of times. I, I'll tell you something. We yeah, went, we went one to, day we uh, got to get an IRL podcast I've going. Actually, I've actually oh, seen all of us. I'd love to do yeah. that. Same well, that's room, what, dude, room listen, fest. when Room when Room Fest happens, genuinely yes. we should do an in real life podcast and just have like a bunch of content creators and J mods who are there. Who's getting the backpack? Like the come in and be yes. <laughs> Is there like a half discount boat ride to get to the UK or some shit, bro? Because oh, I'm playing to get to your oh, you just, Man, you just got to buy the okay, boat. Actually, bro, we make this podcast so big to have no choice but to pay for us. You know? <laughs> yeah, you that's go. the goal. That's it, bro. Do, but that, do, the, do you know what? We went know, to um, our, our like equivalent mm. of meeting up with content creators. We went to Insomnia. I'm guessing, Sween, you know what Insomnia is? Festival? Yeah, yeah I've, I've been to a couple. So we went in August, I think it was. Me... Solo Mission, uh, Reese 07, and Lincoln Ra. Okay, so there's four of us, and uh, oh, dude, Solo Mission booked the Airbnb, and it's in Birmingham. Okay, <clears throat> and um, it all looks nice. Like the pictures look good. It looked nice and you know nice inside. Looks relatively modern and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, let's go for it. Oh my god, turn up. I've never, I, I swear, I've never been to somewhere as rough as the place that we <laughs> stayed in, man. And like, do you know what? They were so cheeky. So they took a picture, the Airbnb, of outside the window. And they there was like over the road, like well over the road, like 50 meters away, there's like a new estate with like new houses. They took a picture of that. So you get this impression that you're going to turn up to this nice spot. It was just a dive. Like it was so bad. <laughs> and like to, to put it into like, in the back garden, like the garden fences had barbed wire <laughs> around the top. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> That's was, so ghetto. I bet Solo could still see over that barbed dude, wire. <laughs> Solo Mission was just like, wow. he was just like, oh, it's because you're from the country. He's like, this isn't rough. And I'm like, mate, there is literally like a tower of flats going up into the heavens behind our place. I'm like, dude, this is real bad. But yeah, that was uh it's experiences like that though. You look back on it, it's a bonding experience, you know. It's always a good time. Mm. Yeah, our our B and B at TwitchCon, we had homeless people outside. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they were yeah. friendly until they weren't. Huh. So Dude, they were like rich homeless people or something, you know? <laughs> they were they were gangsters, but they also yeah. may have been homeless. But I yeah. don't know which one they were. I but they I, like showing choice up. or something. But no, we saw like dolphins and stuff. I mean not dolphins. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw dolphins at the oh, beach because yeah. we were had a be we were next to the beach. Oh, it was crazy. Oh, dude, that's it. Blessed awesome. us. Yeah, but it was I, crazy. It was our first day there. <laughs> um, we're going out there. I'm talking to them because I didn't know they were homeless. Right? They <sighs> look well dressed, and I'm oh, making what, you friends. You wouldn't talk to them because well, they're homeless. Well, well, you probably. I mean, unless they wanted me to, I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> but I was just talking to them, and we're chilling. And all of a sudden, this guy comes up on him, and he goes, "Hey, man!" The guy and the homeless dude's like, "Hey, you owe me money." And I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> uh, uh, bro, I got to go inside. <laughs> real quick. I was just inside chilling. Oh, yeah, Rice was, Rice was hiding. It was a yeah, good, uh, yeah, I was like, I, I don't want to talk to no strangers, bro. What the hell? Yeah, I'm yeah, night, like, I'm good. What are you yeah, thinking, good. dude? But no, I, I think that community events like RuneFest definitely do a lot of good for uh, not only the community, but for us content creators as well. It, it's like, I've made friends with like content creators that I, I just, I wouldn't know. Like, I wouldn't have any reason to interact with them if it wasn't for those kind of events. And, like, now I have friendships with these dudes, and it's like, you know, it's feel really blessed and privileged to have that. So, yeah, I, I, I really am in favor of them bringing those back. I think it always helps to, um, it always helps to kind of like re energize me as well because me you're meeting the people who play your game, right? They love your game enough so much that they spend time playing it and they spend time working to pay for it and that's there's so many games out there i always do feel like really touched that people do 
choose the game that I work on because they could choose anything else. Yeah. And RuneFest is great and events like that are great because you get to meet them and see what a difference you make. Whereas if you spend too long online, then it just descends mm-hmm. into kind of like some flurry of people calling you like names on Twitter and Reddit and you're like, I hate the players. But then you realize that most players are just getting on with playing the game they love, being thankful for it. Mm-hmm. And it's just like a vocal minority you're like, who yeah. are dicks online. Yeah. So RuneFest is great because you meet the people who want to be there. Mm-hmm. more than anyone else i've never met a bad person at first <laughs> like ever like, like anything negative in the slightest it's like everybody's nice everybody's cool but i think that's that's kind of one of those things to be expected to be honest um uh yeah so, I mean, do you have any memories of runefest that really like stand out um we well, i talking about this the other day because we were discussing like how bad some of the internal tech used to be at Jagex, like the 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 module we used to upload news posts and blog posts. So probably what Room First 20, 2017, when we announced Dragon Slayer, and beforehand there was like Modis are desperately trying to make the the news module fit all of the stuff we were announcing in the blog because at the time it couldn't fit like the right amount of characters and stuff. So there's me me and Aiza being like, what do we do? Like we need to put this blog out alongside the announcement to get the poll. Like we're getting ready for the poll and that kind of thing too. So we just crammed around this tiny laptop, running around to try and get like the guys from IT or web because everyone from Jagex comes and helps out. And but like, what can you do? So they pull out their laptop and we're just there on the floor of our laptops trying to make it work just so we can put some more words in a bloody news post. <laughs> oh my god, dude, it's so bad. I've got a really like random a college project the day been before. Fixed. I've got a really random yeah. question. It's... Who who does like the final like confirmed? ready to be on the website kind of tick list like who does the the grammar check-in who does the spell check-in because if i was let anywhere near that laptop it would be a mess chaos on the front page (laughs) we've um at the time it was us like we just we wrote stuff and then if we had time we'd send it around for feedback and whatnot which is why there were a lot more errors back in the day now we have like an editorial team and there's proper processes where we we create like a work ticket and say hey in three weeks time we want to publish this blog we'll give it to you in two weeks time give it back to us two days after that that type of thing so there's a proper process now for approvals and <clears throat> but it didn't used to be like that it used to just be me and ben Aiza just writing stuff sometimes the night of that's awesome yeah Yo, i i got two questions go for it I, i've got i've got i've got done. i've got one question uh, it's kind of just like something i just want to I don't know what the mm. word is. I want to tie this up. So, is the job role that you now have, um, is this is this a completely new position or is this a pre-existing position? Um, people have done marketing at old school before. So, I think only one of them was really player facing, Mod Stone, like way, way, way back in the day, right? Dude, I man, um, by the way, I was thinking if Mod Stone comes back now, it, trifecta. <clears throat> Complete. I do. I love Modstone. I really liked Modstone. Matt, believe it. He was, was, put, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was a he was a nice guy. That would put the uh, th- what's the saying? You never really quit RuneScape. That would really put yeah. in perspective all the JMOS comments. Like yeah. you really don't yeah. quit RuneScape. Uh, I got. I just need my man. Well. I got. On well. su- I got on super well with him. I I liked him a lot, man. He was a cool dude. Yeah, no, he was, he was a good dude. We used to go to this, like again, like with me, him, and Chris, we go to the gym together and stuff. So like we had stone and then we, 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 uh, I used to joke that, uh, the marketing job was like the defense against the dark arts teacher job at Hogwarts because people would just come into it and leave and come into it and leave. It's tough, man. Marketing old school runescape is really difficult because of the type of game it is. And yeah. I'm hoping I do better and last longer than some of the other people who've come in to try and market it, but it's not a new yeah. job. No, it like. And that was why I was doing consultancy because they were trying to get someone to fill the job. So they were like, all right, you're doing your consulting. We need a marketing consultant. So I stepped in gladly because there's another contract. And then eventually started talking more about making it like a, a full job, full-time permanent job. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So, so uh, the, I guess the first one is going to pertain to marketing a lot more. So, you know, now that you've gotten a bit of experience and uh, I guess it's more of a, a, a niche type of, marketing experience right because it's mostly dealt with mmos right 
or, or companies that run MMOs, right? So like from what you've discovered so far, what is kind of like the realisticness in getting absolutely new players versus getting, you know, players that played before and, and coming back, right? Because like, it, it seems to me that like, for the most part, it's almost a massive, a massive amount is, is people that just, you know, come back again, right? And because they've been exposed to marketing, you know, they come back because they played mm -hmm. RuneScape before versus people that are like, oh, wow, what is this game? I want to try it. Like, I feel like that's so small. Like, what, what is the realisticness in getting that, capturing that uh, set of players, like new, new players? Or is it possible, I've, you know, or worth it? Yeah, I think, I think it's possible. Um, going, getting like your lapsed players who used to play back in the day or used to play a year ago or two years ago, three years ago, it's easier because we have our details. We have their accounts. We, we know more about them. They know more about us too. So earlier, you know, when I was talking about, well, how can you position like a series to get a dragon chain to a new player? Because they're going to be like, what the fuck's a dragon chain body? I want to know what the game is. So to answer your question, I think it's realistic. I think it's way more difficult, um, which is probably why our efforts have mostly been geared at re reacquiring and re-engaging or continuing to engage current players or lapsed players and stuff. But new players is like one of my biggest goals. And I, I don't have like a set goal of like, you need to get these many new players. It's, it's not like that. It's not how it works. But I, I want to I wanna make old school. I think within MMOs, players know about old school RuneScape. But outside of MMOs, if you say, I'm trying to think how to express it a bit more eloquently. So if you ask an MMO player about MMOs, they'll probably say RuneScape and old school RuneScape. If you ask somebody who plays games but doesn't play MMOs about, about MMOs, they'll probably say World of Warcraft the Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get old school RuneScape kind of elevated up to that level, which is like, do you play MMOs like World of Warcraft or RuneScape? That's what I'd love to do. Like, try and knock out one of the World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy. Approach. Put, Ru Very good put approach. RuneScape in that awe. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a good stepping stone. That'd be <laughs> like, you know, because like, obviously there's probably another tier, right? And then they'll be like, what are games that you know? And then people will be like, Minecraft or something, right? Like if we can, you know, we don't, we can't even worry about getting there. We just need to worry about like, you know, raising it to a, just one tier above it, I guess. So That'd I don't know how many goal. new players there are for the taking. Like yeah. I've learned in the last, I've only been gone a year, but I've learned a lot in that, in that time because I was working on a game that hadn't been launched yet, which means you have to do a lot of research and a lot of strategy work behind the scenes before you can even start talking about stuff. So like for, for old school, right? I want, first of all, I want to try and work out what our prospective player pool, like the amount of players there are. So, all right, well, we're on PC or on mobile, and we're on cross platform both. So, immediately, we know not to go after console players because we want PC and mobile. We are, let me look at genre, like fantasy, point and click, hardcore MMO. Okay, so we only want to go after those players. We want to look at, we have a reasonable idea of the type of demographic of people play our games, like age, where they're based, for example. We probably want to focus on those. And then we look at the setting. We can kind of like do some focus groups and see does the setting of RuneScape appeal to you? Does the gameplay, does the community focus appeal to you? So that's your pool. You're going after people who play on PC and mobile, who like fantasy, nostalgic, hardcore MMOs, who fit this demographic in these countries, this age group, and they like the setting. And then you kind of, know how many new players you could get and then you have to think about how to get them mm. we haven't done that first bit yet so that's what i want to work on and you can do that there are companies who specialize in it and we can do it as well um it'll, it'll be longer and more expensive doing it ourselves so we'll probably go with like third parties and just talk um, to gamers and understand the right kind of groups th this whole conversation's reminded me of a chat i had with i i think it was one of the higher up jmods when i was at jagex one time and um I can't remember what the guy's name was, but he wasn't like a public J mod, like he was behind the scenes. And I think he was the guy, who, I believe, who spoke directly to the board. And I remember we had a conversation and like everything you've just said to me just sounds like the perfect scenario for trying to push the game on mobile out to like the like Eastern Asia, right? It's like out in China and stuff like that. And like, cause they're, they're on mobile games all the time. Like talk about Lost Ark, Final Fantasy, games player like base wise but yeah asia I, is gigantic i remember yeah. him saying to me that there was a slight issue with china specifically because they're very tight on like the regulations and stuff and i i think it was um, he, he said something along the lines of there were things in runescape 
that would just have to be taken out. Like I, I, I think something like blood like, and skulls yeah. and stuff like that just wouldn't yeah, be allowed. Blood RuneScape? Is that the hit, red hit splats? Is that what that yeah, is? Probably, yeah, probably. Red hit splat. Uh, like uh, blood stains. Blood. There's, there's no blood, blood spots stains. everywhere, right? Think about the unicorn on the ground pass. Like there's blood everywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I got my quest guide full ramp. I don't even see anything. Else. <laughs> Bro, have you have you tried TOB? Right, you tried only once. Yeah, dude, TOB. Blood everywhere. <laughs> blood everywhere. The blood. Hindsight, they couldn't carry me in TOB. Just saying, bro. They talked okay. all this snag, rice and done in a while. Still can not carry me. Uh, we got. We got. I just hadn't done it well. I, I feel like that. That's such a massive mobile audience, right? But there, there's obviously that complication. So I, I don't. Well, then, know if that's then you. Then there's a lot of. Then there's a lot of logistical factors like capacity. Like, can you run a server like that can hold that and things like that? You know what I mean? Like, if you could grow fast, could you actually handle that growth too? You know, there's so many also, things. Also, yeah. localization. You need to localize. Yeah, that's it. because yeah. European audiences, they 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 can read English, so that's fine. We don't need to localize in like different European languages and stuff. In Asian markets, you need to localize, and you're probably localizing in like six or seven different languages then. And we're not set up to localize. That's a lot of engine work and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Even if you wanted to do it, um, China is really hard to get into. Not just because of the 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 kind of the regulations you mentioned, but tons of other stuff too. Um, just the way the country works, it's the kind of government have such a really tight grip on anyone that does business there i don't i wouldn't even if we wanted to i wouldn't be the one managing that conversation so i don't yeah. know how to say I, don't, be, I don't know how it works i, I just watch like, youtube videos on it if you have a business with over 30 to 40 people they will direct government officials to join your business on behalf of their team in china so they will Damn. always have some sort of control somewhat so it's it's a crazy. It, they're very holistic for sure. They're much. That's more a holistic, good way to put right? it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They <laughs> want it, everything to be integrated, you know, as close as possible. But okay, besides that, you know, um, yeah, no, I really am excited to see if you guys can really bring like new new people on board because uh, you know, as a streamer and stuff, I talk to people all the time. I'm always wondering, you know, where they came from, and I swear it's like literally maybe like one in a hundred new viewer that I talk to. They'll be like. Oh wow! Um, yeah, this is my first time playing. Like, uh, you know, like within the first two years, like uh, recently, and and almost every time is always just people coming back. So it's like it's like, damn! I wish we had more new people, you know? Because yeah, I mean that's really what we need, right? I mean, at some point, a lot of us, you know, will probably grow too old or something, you know, and then we can't keep up, you know, like right? You know, we need that. Cutter. I mean, we need that f it's new gonna, blood. We need new yeah, blood, right? Well, I feel like if kids. you could solve it, <laughs> if you could solve it, man, you'd be like we make our own newscapers. <laughs> you know, you'd be truly, you'd be truly like the old, like the true OG, like you know, J mod of of. It's like the mod Ash equivalent. You know, if you could solve that, damn, yeah, this game would be like if I, if I could be the mod app of marketing, I'd be very happy about. It. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. you could be. That'd be amazing, man. Oh, okay, and and the the other last question was regarding your previous time at Jagus, right? You know, it's so funny because, like, you know how, like, people always say, like, at least the high-level people, like, oh, my God, dude, feedback from Reddit must be stupid. Like, it's literally turd, you know, or, like, oh, of course, turd. feedback <laughs> from Twitter. Like, feedback from Twitter, like, you mean the elitist, Shit. right? Like, you get what I'm saying? So, um, anyways, like, you get feedback from all those places back, back in your community days, right? Like, what were, like, some keywords you could describe feedback from each of those sectors? Was it that different amongst you know the different social medias and like what were like um, kind of like the challenges i guess with trying to like put them all into something right and, and turning it into action right or a blog yeah so we ran a couple of like big surveys for players and you know asked for their account name the display name um we asked you know where they spend most of the time talking and reading about the game where they spend most of the time engaging so with that we were able to make like a reasonable guess of the type of players who post on reddit versus the type of players who tweet about runescape so we were, we were able to see that like reddit was typically lower leveled than twitter was more <laughs> higher level and stuff <laughs> uh, youtube had like a good balance of everybody okay oh ooh, that's interesting that's very interesting okay. i'm gonna I'm a bring yeah. that up a lot now <laughs> the reddit people are lower level than the Objective twitter people information still not still not as low as probably some of the people on twitter think like Oh, okay. mm -hmm. I, I think if you listen to some of the people tweeting or read their tweets, they they think like a lot of Redditors started playing yesterday 
rather than they, they still have you know pretty okay accounts like you're saying it's still, still a five out of ten red is still like a five out of ten quality yeah they, they know the game they just but then again that's not it doesn't mean twitter's right like they yeah, yeah. probably no, invested bias. one way for example yeah, yeah, yeah both yeah. of these different platforms have their own biases so it's what? just something we keep in mind and when we've trained when when Aiza and i have trained like new cm and stuff that's what we say like keep in mind these are the types of players you're going to see on these different platforms this is the type of stuff we can predict how each platform is probably going to respond or engage with the subject and stuff too uh but we use different like third party tools to help collate too so one that like measures sentiment for example so it reads everything on a platform related to keywords or posts and then spits out a number at the end of it which is like you know high numbers good low numbers bad so we have we have tools to help us but most of it is a lot of you get a knack for where to spend most of your time reading and engaging and it matters with different subjects more than others so yeah so if you're I'm... pitching something really niche that's only going to affect a small group of players then go after that small group don't just post on reddit and be like what does everybody who doesn't touch this content think yeah mm. yep. that makes sense so I, I assume if you were like i don't know if you were going to put out a survey on something that was like a lower tier piece of content it's like the information that you receive from Reddit may potentially be more useful in that situation because there's more lower levels, for example. But yeah, I think that's yeah. But I'd also want to target the lower level players better than that, like with an email or something or an inbox message. Like we can we can find out who they are, and then open it up to a wider group. But with that kind of stuff, even with new player changes or early game changes, I still really want to hear what like long term players and high level players think about that because we don't want to. We don't want to under, despite what some people think, we don't want to undermine like past achievements or past accomplishments. We we do want to respect the time and effort that people put into the game. Yeah. I've given up on on like maintaining my achievements like that nowadays. It's too it's in, you know there's like that inevitableness right where the game does kind of have to progressively get easier. But like you know with regards to feedback, it's kind of like how do you balance, you know the two sides right like the the more casual and the more veteran, in in putting out content that knowing that inevitably it'll probably power the game but but like only just enough that it's like you know it's okay like it like it, it satisfies both groups right like how easy is that balancing those two sides when it comes to implementing you know often updates that will probably make xp faster or like you know kill things faster etc i think i wasn't here for this but um i think I don't think this is controversial to say. I think Guardians of the Rift is awesome. What a, what a fun mini game that added a lot of people to, to, to like engage with runecrafting and stuff. Yeah. And it didn't really undermine like the high XP rates, I don't think. No. But it also introduced... it didn't make it better. It didn't make it better. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So I think that that I think that type of approach is. I think the, touch, the approach they took with Guardians of the Rift was, was was fantastic in my eyes. Yeah, I personally think it was fine. It, it hit both aspects for sure. So I I do like that. I think yeah. it's I think it's a really really interesting position that you're in because you know I I've spoken about this before but it's like the majority of the player base the bread and butter of the player base or the meat and potatoes you know you're you're looking at people that are just here long term players so it's like you guys at Jagex have a job where it's like okay you obviously want to attract new players to the game but at the same time you also want to appease your long-term loyal audience and subscribers and make sure they're happy with the updates that are coming in. So it's like there's a there's a balance that has to be to be met there. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Uh, I really wish you all the best of luck when it comes to trying to get new players into the game. I'm really excited to see the approach that you take, Jagex takes on that front, because I mean... Even I, and I think about this kind of stuff a lot, it's like, how do you get new players to play the game? So I'm genuinely curious to see what you manage to come up with. And um, yeah, yeah man. Me too. Is there any more questions from either of you boys? Or? No, man. My mind I'm is happy. I'm, I've got everything <laughs> I want right now, bro. I'm just glad Dude. I know Redditors are now lower level. <laughs> it is the best day. And I'm going to take that bit. information as far as I can. I can, imagine seeing, I I can imagine seeing that as a clip just being used till the end of time. <laughs> so oh, it's man. so good. I did not even think about Look, the, the level. The funny thing about Reddit right now is every single new thread is 
here's my idea for a new skill. For a new skill. <laughs> and I'm like, it's oh my a, God. <laughs> it's such a massively talked about uh, thing right now. Like to this day, even like, you know, like two days ago I was streaming, it, it's like, that was like a third of the conversation for uh, seven hours straight, you know? So, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting approach you guys are doing, oh obviously, because you got to do I just, different I just opened time, it. Right? I searched by new. <laughs> uh yeah. we've we've, yeah. we've got dragon taming we've got jousting we've got mini jousting. gaming we've got foraging uh oh. we've got your mum a new skill that's a pretty good one i, I was thinking like I'm what about e-dating you know turn the meme into a skill e-dating it's completely revolutionary and new it's never you know been how creepy honestly. that would be bro <laughs> oh absolutely i'm just kidding don't actually I mean, do it man I, I, that. I, I, <laughs> on, on that subject do i it. think a genuinely good question to ask which is a poll that i did on my youtube was firstly we know people want a new skill that's been answered uh but a question which is often asked is do we go for a pre-existing skill like dungeoneering or you know artisan or any of those skills or is it a completely new skill specifically for old school runescape that has never been thought of before um so i i ran that poll on my youtube in the, in the community section like a week ago and uh from the results it was an overwhelming new skill for old school runescape I, I feel like that information is is quite useful because it, it's kind of clear that you know it was something like 80 percent on a brand new skill for old school runescape that it passed by um and i don't know i don't usually run polls so there might be some bias in the wording you'd have to check it but like to me that's a bit eye-opening it's like okay it seems like people and i would say rightfully so want something that is specifically unique and good for old school runescape that's no one wants something you've recycled. Like no one wants yeah. recycled stuff. I think personal opinion would be let's take inspiration from the best bits of the skills that pre-exist and then try to apply them to something new. Yeah. Um, next month, once everyone's back from the Christmas break, the community scene will beginning like the, you know, step two, which is like the community consultation. Well, I imagine they're going to ask this type of question too, but like in the actual poll module to get, to get like get they want to get tons of insights into what players actually want before they start even putting together the pitches, understanding that kind of thing. Yeah. So question, when do you guys think you will, uh, you know, finalize the three ideas to, you know, for people to kind of like, you know, uh, get feedback from people and, and maybe ultimately vote on that. Cause I imagine it'll be like many months from now. Right. Many months. I, I don't know, but I would be I would be surprised if, if it was sooner than, than many months. Yeah, because yeah, a new skill That's... is like so fundamental, yeah. integral to the game. You have to get it right. I don't think it needs to be the most like immaculately concepted thing that it's hundred percent ready re or released, because it's going to be like any other bit of content where we'll add new stuff to it over the years. So yeah, don't no one no one should expect like. I don't know, like a complete, completed skill. But it needs to be good. It needs to be great. It needs to make old school better. So that's yeah. going to take time. I like that. Yeah. Make old school better. Dude, your word is really good. I like that. Yeah. Um, shoot. There was like one other thing about it. I, I've got. Oh, a yeah. Quick... Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, you go. Yeah. You, you go. can go. You can go. You can go. I, I, was, I was just, okay. I was just thinking, is there such a thing as too much feedback? And what I mean by that is, like like you said, there's like a million people on Reddit right now all giving their idea for a skill that they genuinely think is like the thing that needs to be in the game. Is there ever such a thing as like too much of that? Like, how, how do you manage to like navigate through that? How do you pick the free? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. So there's, 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 a, there's a thing as too much feedback, so... Not just us, but any company in the world or any group or like institution in the world that runs surveys, for example, you don't need to survey 100,000 people. You can survey 1,000 because that's probably going to be representative of like a, you know, you apply the ratio of 1,000 and the times it. So we don't need all the feedback. You just need like a good representative cohort or group of it generally. But there's also no harm in it. Like as much as I'm kind of like, I don't like scrolling through and seeing so many ideas. Some of them are so repeated as well. Yeah. There's no harm in it. People love the game so much that they're spending time writing something, writing an idea together. And I remember the old suggestions forum for new content. Like when I was in my teens, I probably wrote some crap. I remember moaning that construction wasn't released yet. Like 
<laughs> I was I was doing that myself and then yeah. telling him how I think construction should be. So I like that players do it. It means they care enough to to warrant it. And I've I've um I've you know I know I I know a lot of people who work in games and some of them their communities aren't active enough to get the amount of conversation and engagement around. So if anything, I, I'm lucky that there's so much yeah crap. It's a it's a good <laughs> problem to have for sure. One in that context, yeah, definitely, yeah. Right. Oh, right. actually, if anyone funny. who's one put last, together one, an idea, one, yeah, one, yeah, one last on. quick question, right? One last quick question. Okay, so now what what you, with the idea of a new skill, right? There there isn't just the idea of a completely new skill versus a you know reuse skill, right? But it's also the concept in itself, right? Because I remember personally. I, I pitch something like Dungeon as my personal just because it's a skill that isn't just you sit at one place and then you mm -hmm. click on it 10,000 times. It's a, a thing where every time you train it, it's actively engaging and it's also like a, almost a unique experience every time, right? And then you yeah. can do it with people. That's a bonus, but maybe not necessary, right? Like, so so what 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 is the kind of like, is there any bias towards kind of like what what kind of like perspective of skilling that that we want for a new skill is it going to be another you know simple skill where you're just standing at one place or you're only like sticking to a few spots throughout your you know your entire training process or is it going to be like a, a skill where there's a lot of dynamics a lot of you know uh, engagement moving around because like if i could get a skill like for example sailing right that would be a new skill that could totally incorporate a lot of dungeon aspects which would be like my second favorite like Personally, I'm thinking, you know, if we want, to, we're gonna get a new skill. It should, it shouldn't be just like kind of like a skill where you train just to get rewards. More so, maybe a skill that you initially might try it out because of rewards, but then you realize like ultimately it's actually just fun to do, and you want to get just train it to 99, right? Like, what is kind of like the bias here? Like, what are you accepting? You know, like is a, a skill like mining like 2.0 in in the in you know within acceptable <laughs> standards, or, or are we looking for something really dynamic? I guess. Uh, maybe that's not. What if it was your, just Slayer Two? Yeah, <laughs> just yeah I, I know it's probably. Shit. Yeah, it's probably not within your like job, you know, role. But I'm just imagining Jagex might already have some sort of dialogue, you know, about that, right? Uh, the identity, right? What kind of identity will this new skill have, you know? Um, I think the best way to answer it is to. I don't have it open. Maybe I should uh, look at the the so with the new skill blog the right? The guys who are... right? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're working on the skill and they set out like it just should have four pillars um it should it should be a healthy addition that's deeply rooted in the game it should provide meaningful progression it should appeal to a variety of player types and i think maybe this last one kind of answers your question which is the last pillar is should this new skill should be enjoyable to train so clicking a rock over and over and over again isn't the most enjoyable thing to train so you could probably rule that out yeah, because like my point is that like if a lot of these skills that exist were to be pulled now, I don't think many of them would pass. You know, no, no, no. no. Agility, <laughs> wins, <laughs> fire making, that's wins, why I kind of. I think attack, strength, and defense would be one skill. That would be like melee combat or something. They probably why do you need three yeah. of them? For example, that's 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 what most players would say now. They'd probably yeah. try and merge fletching and woodcutting and crafting together, or at least fletching and woodcutting. Yeah, yeah, like mm -hmm. it wouldn't past oh, okay so i guess the bias would be like we, we are looking we're not trying to make those kind of skills again at least for the first one you know it, it's like kind of a the acceptance you know because like i feel like a lot of people are like well you know what's wrong with that like i've had some people actually say like what's wrong with them you know whereas i'm like it's 2023 i don't think we can take, do those again like you know again i feel like, like, i feel like this whole conversation kind of boils down to uh, like leading towards the skill has to encapsulate so many good things it's like it almost yeah. there's the argument and I, it's, people are saying this skill has to be like the perfect skill and I, I feel like that kind of goes without saying just because it's the first new old school skill and it's taken so long to get to the point where the player base have like all agreed to have one so it's, it's kind of it is a big deal i think the jagex have a lot of uh pressure on them to deliver something good and uh i i i've you know i don't know what that saying is it's like sometimes too much pressure can create like dust and diamonds? sometimes it makes diamonds oh, never mind. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you know what i mean like, diamonds. Diamonds. i think it's diamonds right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mean diamonds right <laughs> but, but, Which is us, i'm right? explaining like i'm explaining the metaphor of like you can just it can turn into shit or it can make a diamond that it's like i Shitting. i'm hoping that's going to be the case uh -huh. for this new skill 
Because they obviously. I know. don't think it needs to be perfect because perfect means like you release it and don't touch it again. I fully yeah. expect that, you know, we're, we're going to have a beta for it as well. It will need to be balanced. We'd have to tweak stuff and, and train stuff and fix stuff and add new stuff to it. But it has to be, it has to be nearly perfect. It has to be very, 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 yeah. very good. Like, and we don't yeah. want to release something crap. Why would we? Yeah. Like, contrary to what some people think, we want to make a good game and, and yeah. make stuff that people <laughs> enjoy doing. Yeah. I, I've got, I've got hope. I'm feeling quite um, positive about it. I think I'm excited for come. it. Yeah. To relive an experience of a new skill that we've never seen before is going to be like everyone's rushing towards the point, buying all the items, staying up all night. Hopefully mm -hmm. no one dies. No, oh, bro. <laughs> Sometimes, bro, people go down during new updates, my man. So hopefully everyone's safe. But, you oh, know, right. it, it should be mainly exciting. It will, it's going to be it something be. new. And it's going to be like something really new. Like... Mm. And a raid can be figured out pretty quickly, but a new skill that takes you from level one to ninety nine. It's, takes a, it's long a time, bigger right? update. I think it's a bigger update, yeah. right? I think this is, is this is going to be the biggest super, update. It's, it's going to feel it's going to feel like an MMO, like a real MMO moment of like yeah, yeah. I'm I'm trying to work out what to do with all these other players around me. I remember when farming released on day one, and I rocked up and I was like I didn't have a clue what I was doing, but I loved it because we were just typing at the farming patch, being like, what do I do? How do I plant a seed? What tools do I need? And I. <laughs> I'd love that again. That'd be great to have so many people clueless about what to do. I mean, hopefully I'll do a better job of market it so players know what to do. But <laughs> yeah. that kind of that kind of like collaborative moment of figuring stuff out, the unknown out, that'd be brilliant. That's going to be mm. that's going to mark okay. a massive like milestone in your new job title because like you you probably are already thinking of how you're going to advertise whatever this new skill is. You're going to have to think of like you know, obviously you want to advertise it to existing players and people that haven't played the game in a long time because it's like new skill. Like that's a huge selling point. Like I imagine so many people it's gonna are gonna make come back for that. Ripples. That's kind of how I yeah. see the gaming community is just like it's it's water. And every time something happens in one of the communities, it makes a ripple and it just kind of bounces through the rest of it, right? Like when Riot was making new games outside of League of Legends. That rippled in. Now we got Valorant. Everyone's esporty. New skill in RuneScape would create a lot of talking points just amongst the gaming community itself. And if this skill was, say, like sailing, people would be like, "What does that even mean? How do you train this? Can you go in yeah. the water now?" That I think that alone. Would I think be huge. if it's a new skill which is very new player friendly, that would probably be like a super hit. Because imagine from like Sween's point of view, if he's able to advertise this new skill, which is super interactive, and it's like, hey, you can do this straight off of Tutorial Island. Like, that would be great, you know? Because then it would just... They start you off in a little skill. raft and a paddle, and you got to paddle your way in a lumberage. You're literally saying... Tutorial literally Island. Literally sailing. Sailing. <laughs> <That'd be great. laughs> literally sailing, you're discussing. But listen, we've been on here now, boys, for two and a half hours. Sween, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, man. Um... Dude, I'm so happy to hear that you returned to the game. It fills me with hope. It gives me a chance. I, I think this is undeniably a good thing. Hopefully you get a chance to uh, say hi to Manked Up Mage in the office. I love Manked, man. I'm so glad he got the job as well. That's fantastic. But um, I was stoked. Well, that was brilliant to see him sign. Uh, thanks for having me, man. And it's, it's, you know, all those things you just said, Dan, it's very kind. It, uh, yeah. When I announced our return, it was, it was so nice to see. It was like, dude, I'm home again. It feels great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy to. I'm really happy to hear your vision for your new job because you know it is. I think it's a very important thing that needs to be solved eventually. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, man, like you definitely have the best shot. I think yeah. out of any of the J mods. So looking forward to see how you do it. You I, know? Hope, I hope you kill it, man. I, I. It sounds to me like you've got a new perspective on it, considering you just came from uh, the Eve Online community and you've been working on a new developing game and trying to get new players. So, like, you probably have a very different vision from a lot of other people, and even those working at Jagex. So, I wish you the best of luck, dude. Um, do you have a social media or anything you'd like us to shout out here at the end? No, I hate social media. Don't follow me or tweet at me. <laughs> Don't, please. Right, and real quick, what word should we use? I like the video. Like, ah, yeah, like the video. <laughs> we, we always have a word at the end of the podcast for people to comment down below. Master marketer. <laughs> Master bad. marketer. There it is, boys. Yeah, right. Mr. Mold Sween, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, yeah. best of luck. Thanks for having me, guys. Do.